Hello, welcome everybody and welcome to the stream. Um, today's a special one for me and um, I, I hope that you're all well. I hope that you're all doing fantastic. Um, I th This is a special one for me and I'm so glad you can all join me. I see you out there, Ember and Morenia and Tinfoil Freak and Marty, Brucifer, Barrier, um, Ivan, greetings, um, Nana, so good to see you as always and Big Bad Mama. That mummer is in the house. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. This this is a special one. It really is a special one. Um, this is something that I promised myself I would do at the start of this month. I, I promised myself I would I would go and examine um, the the absolute um, the absolute horror show uh, that is uh, Matt the the bigot pal and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to make good on that promise to myself, um, because if I promise myself, but before I do, just going to throw that in chat. I've gotten a few emails lately that sort of says, what's your position on, you know, sort of men wanting to be women? And and I, I thought I'd made my position clear. I For some reason, it's not. So I just... Um, just going to throw that in there. Hello, James Wolf. Yeah, I, I was just watching that until... Um, until uh, uh you know this this was going to start so um oh thank you so much diploma mill and papa emeritus i really i really um um thing i i, I really appreciate it I, I really do um but firstly some something that sort of came across from um i, I saw on ember's channel and um I, I really wanted to sort of put out there is that um Somebody has has recently come out, and that's a uh, Planner Walk. If you're unfamiliar with Planner Walk, and and Ember did a did a really good stream, um, I, I want to I, I want to support Planner Walk. Um, her coming out as as a trans woman, and um, I I absolutely want to want to support this this wonderful wonderful person, um, and and sort of yeah, I I, I think. Um, it probably also needs a bit of explaining. So it was a bit of a wild ride to get here, which was intentional. Now, I probably don't sound exactly how you expect me to sound. And if you're still wondering what's going on, I don't know how you don't see the what. Yeah, I, I look, um, Planner Walk is is fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, like, I don't watch Planner Walk all the time. I've mostly seen her on... Um, um 
um sort of craig's videos um or fight the flat earth videos kind of thing when i occasionally watch them or um i think simon dan occasionally uses her clips um she's i saw on her about player page that she's uh nikki um now so um i i sent sent her an email sort of saying hey i i absolutely support you but i wanted to go on on record and say yes we support you um it, it just it, it breaks my heart like you have to cuddle a shark and you know sort of weather the internet um i'm, I'm so sorry but i won't i won't harp on this do i have to say it so some of you will have seen the video on april 1st a fun video all about eggs yes i was being serious right at the end when i said this anyway i will see you in the next egg between you and me the actual joke of this video is that I'm trans. Now, some people realise that it wasn't a joke because it's clearly very trans. Right, right. So, so look, I, I think we're underestimating just how, um, just how scary this is for somebody, and just how, just how sort of you know, ner I, I can only imagine how nervous you'd you'd be going on to say, "Hello, world. I'm I'm." I identify as a woman and I want people to accept me. And I just want to say I I 100% accept Nikki. I 100%. And, and you know, congratulations. Um, you know, I, I hope you feel um, good about it. I hope that you've gotten support. I hope that um, we can we can 100% um, get behind your choice in life. Because it is your choice. This is the thing. Like nobody can tell you what you what you 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 are and what you want to be. I, I I don't like people that do. Um, but the the other thing, oh, Marenia, no, it, it's it's absolutely nothing. It's the least I can do. Um, I don't I don't look, Marenia. I, I don't want to say, hey, this is what you all should be doing. This is what you know. All I can do is stand on the sidelines and say whatever direction you want to move in. I will be there to, to, you know, say something. I, I will support you. Um, I can't decide where this this goes because I'm not part of of the people that are that are determining what's best in life for me. So, um, I, I all I can do is sort of say, hey, there, there's a group of people in our society who, at, at, let, let's face it, there's there's it doesn't affect anybody else, right? Like it it just I, I don't know why, like. It, it it sort of is, oh well, you just wanna, you know, sort of um be be identified with a certain label. And as a humanist, I say if you want a label and you choose that label, then then I will I'll, I'll respect it. That's fine. Um I think that there's labels that you have to earn. You know, there's there's sort of positions and titles that you have to earn, but there there's positions and titles that you don't. Um, I want to be known as a geek. I, that's what I identify as. And for people to say, oh, well, you're not really a geek. You're too, what, fill in the blank. You're too big or strong or whatever to be this thing that I identify with. It's not up to you. So some some of these labels we, we um, and, and, and so I want to support that as just a genuine human being. Um, something, something else that sort of happened recently was, um, the raging atheist stopped raging and stopped atheisting. So um, it, it was kind of baffling, but I, I originally wrote a, a letter of support sort of saying, hey, um, you mentioned on your your um, your conversion video or your semi-conversion video. Um, oh, thanks, Dr. Dino. Yeah, have fun, mate. I definitely have fun. If you're out with friends, absolutely. Um, so, so the raging atheist who's known as Nock, um, they like I, I don't I don't begrudge them for becoming a theist. Like that's fine. That's a hundred percent fine. But the the problem is with Nock that since I sent him an email, sort of saying, "Hey, I I you know I don't hate you. I I support your choice to become a theist," because that's the thing. I I, I do support his choice to become a theist right I, I do if he wants to decide to become a theist then so be it you know like why 
why should I sit there and go, no, you're not allowed to be a theist kind of thing? No, it, it's not, you know, it, it it is not my choice. Now, where I do have a problem with is then not going around and going on to, to, to his channel. A reality. At least change the way that people thought. At least some people. Maybe planted the seeds of the people that would change society forever. I don't fucking know. Maybe I was on a path to nothing, which is what my path turned out to be. Yeah, so so he sort of came out in this this video, sort of how he became a theist again, and talked about how like he feels like there's something, and that's fine. I've got no problem with this. So this was sort of three weeks ago. Sent him an email saying, "Hey, I don't hate you. I support your choice. Um, that that's your choice. I, I might you know disagree with your reasons, but it's not up to me, right? It's not up to me to determine anybody's path in life. The the one that I did have a problem with." is um, when when he went on to Matt Powell's channel to do an interview. And, and of all the people he could have chosen, out of all the people, Matt Powell. Like, I mean, seriously, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, honestly, and I've always said this, even as the Raging Atheist, I'd be kind of offended if you weren't, you know, like, if you if you weren't like i know atheists get offended about people saying i'm going to pray for you all of that i never really did because as a christian that's the best thing you can do right like if you weren't doing that then it, it that truly means that you have no compassion for me or no yeah so i i kind of i kind of agree i kind of disagree with this. it doesn't it doesn't worry me if people say i'm praying for you like i just go yeah okay well you're doing nothing great um i think that a lot of people sort of go well you know, they sort of take it as, well, you're literally doing nothing to help me while, while thinking that you're doing me this great service. It's that it's that idea that somehow, oh, I'm going to pray for you, so I'm doing something. No, you're not doing anything. You're literally trying to wish that that things get better for me. And and some people take exception to that, and I get, I get that like I do. And other people who have, you know, sort of ex-theists um, who have deconverted and deconstructed see it as rude because um they prayed and nothing ever happened kind of thing so so there, there's a lot in that and but but i get I, I don't i don't have a problem with people saying i'll pray for you i, I find it kind of humorous because it's sort of saying well i'm i'm gonna wish that you you know get better but i i take it as you know um or i try to take it as um you know somebody going well i hope you get better soon if you're sick kind of thing well i'll pray for you so I hope you get better soon. Okay, all right. You know, that's okay. I'll, I'll take it as the well wishes rather than sort of some kind of. It's it, it's 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 kind of it is irritating when somebody sort of acts like they've done you a massive service though. Oh, I'm praying for you. Isn't that fantastic? Well, no, not really. I mean, I don't see the point. It doesn't do anything. I don't I don't get it. But you know. I'll take your wishes as best wishes, I guess. Like, it, it can get irritating. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah, and hopes and prayers. Definitely, Big Bad Mama. I'll, I'll admit to that. You know, when, when we're talking, I, I was sort of more talking people that say it to me rather than in general. But, yeah, it, it, it's sort of hopes and prayers when it comes to gun violence and stuff. It just, it's just, it's not going to help anything. Like, it, it will not do literally anything. People have been hoping and praying for you know, shootings to stop for, for ages. So it, it definitely doesn't do anything. Like, it's just not, you know, there, there, there's things that work and things that don't work. And, you know, it, 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 it doesn't work. No, no empathy for me as a human being. So, you know, I, I think that's something that atheists need to realize. Do that internal critique and realize when a Christian is telling you, atheist, that they're praying for you, that's literally one of the best things they can tell you. Yeah, so that that's um knock on um on um Matt Powell's channel. And and like what are you doing, Knock? Out of all the people, why didn't you go on to Rebecca's, right? Or something like that, Bread of Life, who who's, you know, I mean, I, I disagree with her on a lot of things, but she came out in support of the trans community. 
sort of saying everybody deserves love. There's nothing broken about trans people. They're perfectly fine. You know, why not go on to one of these people who you can at least respect? I, I don't understand. It, it's baffling to me. And, okay, you might say, okay, well, maybe maybe Nock didn't, didn't know that, that sort of Matt Powell was like this. He 100% knew. So this is, um, and I'll, I'll grab this screen. It's a debate back in um, three years ago. So just three years ago. Um, and, and this is like one of Matt Powell's like five debates on his channel kind of thing. I don't know. I think he may see himself as this amazing debater. He's had, he's had, he's done stuff all. He really has. And sort of as, as I'll point out later, his arguments are, he's not a smart man. Like he, his arguments are pretty terrible, pretty terrible. Um, but I'm just going to play this to show you that, that he 100% knows what, what Matt Powell is like. I want to say again, uh, thank you to both of you and uh, to everybody watching. Thank you for uh, coming in and watching. Subscribe real quick. And uh, uh, with that being said, Raging Age. Oh, and there, there's Jim Majors, who turned out to be a disaster as well. Let's not forget that, you know, that's another another tool, you know, giant tool video. Yes, go ahead and uh, give us your five minutes. Matt, you had a chance, man. You know, I mean, I was never going to stop making videos of you, but maybe our conversation could have changed back to a more positive conversation. Um, you approached me with with ending our feud. Yeah. So um, the Plum Mill Doc, you know, I, I think I think his pranks, I think pranks in order to be uh, funny shouldn't be just outright mean. Um there's 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 a there's a fine line between you know a funny prank and sort of just laughing off somebody's distress and and you know his his is um his his idea of a prank is basically to go and spread hate speech around which is um thingo uh what happened to jim oh well, certain general that's another video uh, Jim is apparently an imposter. So yeah, yeah. Um, th th it's it's not a prank. It's basically lightly veiled hate speech. Is what it is. Um, there's no, you know, I mean, would you accept going out and and doing pranks on black people, kind of thing? You know, would that be funny to you? Like any minority you care to name. You know, would would you would you like doing racist pranks on black people or racist pranks on on you know Asian people? Um, yeah, it, it it's not cool. It, it's all it is is hate speech. That's all it is. It, they, they're not. They're only supposed to be funny to people who a agree with him and b are incredibly cruel. Our feud with getting it over with, with duking it out. I've approached you several times trying to get you to answer um, the misrepresentation of myself in your movie. I thought I was finally going to get that. Um, I found out today that it was changed. Um, I went along and said that it's fine because after a conversation with you, you said, well, we'll, we're, we'll call the debate that, but it'll be a wide ranging discussion and I have no problems if you discuss um, what I wanted to discuss tonight. And I was very open about what that was. Um, I think that you had a chance to really maybe bring it back to the level to to do that third one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face conversation like we spoke on the phone about this morning yeah so so this is sort of a disagreement between how he was portrayed in one of matt's videos so he's had this history of matt where he's kind of sort of misrepresented him and and sort of you know absolutely absolutely um been a a, a let's face it a giant tool to to knock so i don't understand why he's going back and sort of going okay well i was wrong to you and i i i you know i'm now on your in your camp kind of thing it, it's it's weird it's weird morning um well yeah i know he's not a christian but of all the places you could sort of you know have a conversation about why you're changing faith why Matt Powell? Like, Matt Powell isn't going to accept that you're just a theist. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. Um, if you just came in genuine, maybe a little contrite. Like, and I'm not even worried about the movie, Matt. I'm worried about the rhetoric about gay people, homosexuals. Right. So this is where he says, this is the rhetoric that I'm worried about. Okay, so he knows that, that Matt supports this kind of thing. He absolutely knows it. I'm worried about the homophobic slurs that you leave on 85% of the comments that you leave me include homophobic slurs. I'm worried with you calling me a reprobate that has led to death. Yeah, and look at look at this guy smile. It like he leaves comments that are homophobic slurs. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Oh, I'm 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 just I'm just over there peddling homophobia and calling you slurs. Oh, that's hilarious, isn't it, Matt? What a smug bully. And I want to examine sort of Matt's behavior a little more. Um, you know, sort of getting to why or or at least try and find a, a reason why he's like this. Why he he sort of says all these things cuz yeah. But the death threats of my child. Of my child, Matt. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. Well, you can, you can. I don't believe that. I've got death threats too, Matt, due to all this. I let you speak. You can take your disbelief and shove it up your. Hey, hey, hey guys. Okay, 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 hang on. Let's just end it up. Threatened. Let's not. I've been threatened. Let reading aging atheist but finish his. Uh, I, I apologize. And I told myself I wouldn't. But you can take your disbelief, Matt. And I don't care what you do with it. So, so he basically said that he went on his channel and threatened him. So, um, what? Why you would sort of associate yourself with this person, this this man, Matt Powell, is beyond me. Out of all of the people you could have chosen to to sort of, you know, as your first foray into theism, like why not go to Rebecca, Bread of Life? Rebecca came out sort of saying, "Hey, it's okay if you're trans; you are still loved." And, you know, I may disagree with her reasons for that, but, hey, she's on board. That's fine. Do I care why she is supporting the trans community? I do not, right? I, I she, She's a good person. There's other Christians around who are good people. I, I, just, I just don't understand. I have been threatened be with the words reprobate time and time again. You have called me reprobate time and time again. I was hoping that you would come and resolve this issue. That actually makes me laugh, that word, like the reprobate thing. It, it actually makes me laugh. Um, it, it, for some reason, it's supposed to mean something to me. I, I don't understand. Like, like, oh, you're a rep. Let's look up. What, what is a reprobate anyway? Like, I believe it's somebody that, that sort of doesn't follow God's word or, or is un, unprincipled or something. Um a sinner who is not of the elect and is predestined to damnation. Yeah, I I, I find that hilarious because, like, the, the normal, um, that's the, the theological definition of it. The normal definition of it is sort of a really unprincipled person, somebody who has no morals, basically. So Matt Powell sort of saying retrobate is incredibly funny to me because he is the most, one of the most immoral people that you'll ever hope to meet. And yet he's sitting there going, oh, you're unprincipled. Wow. You chose not to do so. So instead of a resolved issue, all you did was sit here and show yourself for the hate monger you are. And all I had to do really is sit here and let you do it. And I don't think I ever want to speak to you again. I'm at the, that face to face, it's done. It's not gonna happen. Um, this will be my last Matt Powell comment. Apparently not, huh? Apparently not. No, in instead you're sort of going on his channel and getting, you know, more more traffic for him by saying, hey, I was the raging atheist, I hated Matt Powell, and now I'm kind of, I've, I've moved my position. So, um, I, look, not still love you. I don't, you know, I just don't know what you're thinking, mate. I, I well, I don't get me wrong. I've got no problem with him becoming a theist. It's just who he's decided to support um, in his theism is is a problem. It's a problem because because like if you didn't know who Matt Powell was, knock. If you didn't know who Matt Powell was, 
I would understand, but you do know who this man is and you know what he represents, and it's not cool. It's not cool. Conversation. You got two minutes. You disgust me. I am done with you. Yeah, and he disgusts me as well. He should disgust anybody who has a, a genuine love of humanity and humans and, and wants people to, um, you know, be happy and genuine in life. I mean, I've got I've got more for you. This is just sort of gotcha. And with that, also, so so Matt has been on modern day debate kind of thing, right? So this this is, I mean, it might have been called something different, um, but you know, he 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 has been on modern day debate, but he doesn't debate anymore because um, it's too easy to sort of throw him up now. Um, the, so why is Matt such a bad person? Why is he such a horrible person? And why is this? I think I want to share um, the amazing Scarlet Fiction, who I, I, I've got to say, I, I was so impressed watching this video. Um, Skylar is an amazing guy. Um, I disagree with him on a number of topics. He's still an amazing guy. Um, very, very pleasant to talk to. I've talked to Skylar before. Um, really, really good at at sort of getting these these opinions out. It's been so uh, awesome to gracious with his presence here. Uh, please just email me, skylarfictionshow at gmail.com. Comment me in the messages. I'll try to get back to you. Uh, but with no, uh, before we get any more lost in all this rambling of mine, please, Matt, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and what you love, all that fun stuff. John. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Matt Powell. And uh, I, I don't do a ton on YouTube, but I have posted a couple of videos which have gotten a, a lot of attention. Um, I, uh, I like to travel and, and preach on the Bible. Um, I'm yeah, so he's very young here, 22. This is like five years ago, but this is where Matt's major positions on the LGBTQI um, sort of came out and, and was really solidified. And he hasn't backed off of it since then. So keep this in mind, okay? He hasn't... He hasn't said, "Oh no, I was wrong." Um, this is this is what his position is. Um, I'm uh, I just turned 22 years old. I'm no I'm no pastor. I'm not ordained or anything. I'm just a college student that I guess you could say is uh, fed up with the the propaganda of 2018 America. And you know, I believe there are certain agendas that are being pushed that are actually unscientific, illogical. Yeah. So as as we'll see later on, like Matt Powell doesn't even understand what scientific means. He, his his arguments are so fallacious that they're, they're absolutely cringeworthy. So, you know, get, get your cringing faces on, people, because Matt Powell's arguments are worse than bad. They are terrible. Um, and uh, and th those are some of the things. Th that's just some things about me. I believe that the Bible is the word of God. I believe that it's without error from cover to cover. I believe the King James Bible specifically is the word of God. I believe these others are frauds. I believe it's easy to find contradictions in them. Yeah. It's easy to find contradiction in the King James, mate. There's no, there's no problem in finding contradiction in the King James. Like seriously. And uh, so, with with that being said, that's that's just a little bit about me. I love the Bible. I love uh, Christianity. And from my understanding, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So, uh, with it, with no further ado, I guess I'll ask. Uh, just curious, Sean, uh, what worldview are you coming from? Because I've uh, I, I haven't actually studied a lot about you. I haven't had much time, so. Sure, sure. I just to give you, it's Skylar. Uh, I think you might, you yeah, might okay. call me No big deal, brother. It's not a, not a problem. Man. We don't know each other. <laughs> Skylar, yeah, right. uh, just call me Skylar. Skylar Fiction is my channel. Um, but uh, basically, um, to, just to give you a little bit of background on me, uh, I was um, what I would say a quote-unquote Christian uh, for a long time at 19 years. Yeah, so as far as I understand it, Skylar's sort of become a um, a theist, a, a sort of polytheist now. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, you know, I, I I think that sort of both of these Skylar and and uh, Nock have sort of made it made it um, um, back to theism, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. I've got no problem with that. It's just uh, you know, I, I think that. Um, Skylar is, this is his first time meeting Matt Powell. I don't think he's had a lot of interactions with him afterwards. 18 years old, I, what I would call be born again. Uh, I was studying to be a minister at one point. I was doing an apprenticeship. Um, 
basically just, you know, throughout life and study kind of changed my beliefs, uh, moved more into a deistic position for a long time. Yeah. Dead fishes. This is from five years ago. So th at that point they did not know each other. That's the thing. Like they didn't really know each other very well at all. This was sort of an off the, the, the cuff kind of thing. Um, and you know, Rather recently, it's kind of just become more agnostic, but uh, I still have some uh, some appreciation for the deistic kind of uh, views. Um, but now I, uh, you know, I would say I'm definitely atheistic towards the Christian religion. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like a basic idea. I'm an anti-moral realist. Um, but in general, I mean, it's more complex than that, but that's a basic kind of overview uh, of my general beliefs. Awesome. All right. So uh, mm -hmm. I guess what's, what's the subject matter? What's the first thing that comes to your well, mind? Well, well, <laughs> I got to ask you about the video with the video game rant. I got to ask you that fun. That's <laughs> first thing. It's more, more for fun. I think that's a more lighthearted question. Yeah. So the, the, apparently the Matt Powell made like a video game rant like, oh, video games are bad. They're destroying, you know, everything like video games are fine. Relax. Uh, and, uh, I, were you, were you like oh. preaching at your church? What was going on? And I know yeah. you were really kind of right. talking smack about yeah. some video games. Just love to hear a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, the news media, I know they make it out like I'm some sort of hateful person. The thing is the Bible. You are a hateful person. That's exactly what you are. Like, this is the thing, like the way that he talks about it, 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 it is vitriolic. Like he has bile coming up when he talks about this stuff well let's say there is a time to hate and there's a time to love and the thing is um one of these things that all the atheists that hate my guts um, it's a time to hate what time is that oh it's pride month it must be hate time I, I i don't think that's true i i don't think there is a time to hate i i think that hate is based upon fear like Anything that you hate, you're in, a, in actual fact afraid of. That that's what I'm what I'm saying. You know, th this whole thing about oh, atheists hate that. N no, no, atheists don't hate you. We're afraid of you. And it's time to recognize that. It's time to say, hey, um, we don't we don't hate these people because we want ill on them. We 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 speak out, and and what looks like hate is actually going. Hey, we have these fundamentalists, these fundamentalist Christians, who are um, who are a a danger to to people that we love. Like it's not even hyperbolic; they're literally a danger to the people that we love. And and that 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 makes me scared. I I, I do not want the people that I love. Um, I, I do not want, um, the, the, you know, the, the people that I love to be thinking, if you hate the TV, do you fear it? Might, no, you, look, when I say it's based on fear, it might not be the fear of the thing that you're, you're talking about. It might be fear of some kind of other consequences. It might be fear that you'll never get the remote to work again. It might be fear that you're powerless. It might be fear that you have no control over your situation online i've been doing is they, they all you know comment on my videos and incidentally you know i click on their videos and it's always fantasy it's always a video game and you know it, it cracks me up how they just sit back and they're like well we're going to attack god but we don't even believe in him you know? yeah yeah well i mean it's not god we're attacking we're attacking your unsupported beliefs because those beliefs that you have have an effect in the world. They 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 do have an effect. Um, the 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 sort of beliefs that you espouse um, have an effect on our lives. Because unfortunately, there is a massive machine of of religion that puts a lot of money and a lot of effort towards making laws that affect me, that affect my neighbour, that affect all of our families. We don't live in a bubble where where nothing um, nothing affects one another, and you know, sort of thing. We 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 live in a combined state. And if you're, yeah, I I, I don't know. And and here's the thing about video games, and I'm going to support video games as well. I'm a hundred percent 
video game supporter as well as well as an ally i am sort of a video game supporter everybody you see that is proficient to a great degree in with computers almost 100% of them played video games as, as either as a child or continuing to or whatever almost 100% of it people out there play video games it's it's nuts it it is is absolutely something that you come across because um, the problem solving that these things treat you to do, and yeah, not always, it is a leisure activity, but it's a leisure activity like crosswords increase your vocabulary or um, sort of Sudoku increases your logic skills kind of thing. You know, th there are leisure activities that have a side effect and the amount of people that, that are computer illiterate that they don't ever play video games or never touched one kind of thing. Um there is nothing wrong with getting kids into computers. It's going to have to happen because the level of knowledge for computers that is required nowadays, like you can't get a job if you're not computer literate. Do you realize that, Matt Powell? You need to be computer literate to just get a job. Like, um, you know, and, and there, there has been studies done on this that the problem-solving abilities that computer games give you are, are, are a tangible benefit. It is a tangible benefit of, of playing video games. Th that's it. You know, just like if you play football or whatever, you, you, you will have, you know, increased athleticism. If you work out your brain, your brain becomes better at solving problems. You know, it's like saying, well, I don't believe in Santa Claus, but I'm going to found a club and just attack, attack, attack. To me, it's a lot. Well, yeah, if, if people like, you know, if, if people were making laws that you had to leave cookies out for Santa, then yes, yes, I would be have forming a club saying, and you know what that club would be called? No cookies for Santa because he's not freaking real. Like, this is the thing. Like, you, you can't compare these two because the actions that people are taking on these two things are not the same things, right? So. If there was a multi-million dollar um, edifice that is promoting, um, um, you know, elf enslavement, for instance, right? If, if there was a multi-million dollar political pax and, and religious pax promoting elf enslavement and the leaving out of cookies and milk for Santa, then, yeah, that's when you would see the anti-Santaists, the anti-Santaists formed the anti-Santa club. But at the moment, we have kind of priorities. I, I don't think it's right to, to um, let children believe in Santa. I believed in Santa because my parents did that to me kind of thing. And I felt so embarrassed when I found out like I was, um, I was, was, um, just just believing in something that they'd made up. They, they made it up. They even convinced me because they put like, um, you know, they had a, had a neighbor put footprints on the ground and stuff. I mean, who does this? It's, it's ludicrous. Anyway, like I don't, I don't think the two things are the same though. The reason why we, we talk about Christianity is because it affects my life a lot more than Santa does. That's why we speak out. But, you know, this this is sort of the most basic of basic arguments. This sort of just shows that Matt Powell cannot think logically about, about what he's talking about. Um, yeah. Me, it's illogical and stupid. Um, so I just got fed up with it. It's illogical and stupid. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't hold your logic in very high esteem, Matt Powell. I really don't. At a certain point in my sermon, I just I couldn't help but uh, rant a little bit on it. What now? What's, what's the new? The, yeah. No, I was just what, the news media. New, yeah, yeah, what's the news media you're talking about? Like that. That's what I guess I should I should ask you. That's what I was kind of curious about. Yeah, yeah. So Patheos.com and all those people are saying, you know, that I'm some liar. You know, that I just get on and I like to lie about people. That I'm, you know, filled with hate. But uh, yeah, it kind of seems that way, mate. It really does. Um, if you're if you're speaking up against these people that have done nothing to you and don't affect your life in any way in the slightest, then yeah, you're kind of hateful, mate. Just saying.
But the thing is, I, I, I believe the truth. I mean, I was, I was once an atheist. I, mm -hmm. I had no belief in God whatsoever. And I'm not sure I believe that. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know this person. I don't know their inner workings. But he's 22. And it, it's like he's never, like, his, his arguments are so terrible. It, it's almost like you would say, um, you know, I, I, I don't think... I, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I kind of, I kind of doubt it. And, uh, you know, there's, and it's funny because people are like, you know, oh, well, we shouldn't even have these discussions anymore about God because the idea. Well, it, it's kind of like the way that he sort of says, oh, you know, atheists will just run around and they're going to kill everybody. You know, just the, the, vit, the, the rhetoric that atheists would do, you know, it, it really is a, you know, I, I don't know, because if you're an atheist, you weren't doing those things, Matt Powell. That's the thing. Because the idea of God not being real is, is just so crazy. But the thing is, I think it's really the other way. Really, Ember? Yeah, see, that that I would believe, you know, never lived this day in church in his life. He comes off like that. So saying he was an atheist, I'm not sure that's true. I'm not. I'm not sure that was true. The other way, I think we shouldn't even have a discussion on whether or not God is existing, because I think it's just such a silly discussion to begin. That's just me. Sure, sure. Know? Yeah, you don't think we should have a discussion about it because it it's patently absurd. Um, you know, you're sort of saying, well, it's so obvious that he exists. Well, it's not. And even if atheists didn't exist. It's still not obvious that the Christian God exists. You know how I know? Because Christians aren't the majority of people that believe in God. That you know, there, there's there's Islam, there's Buddhists, there's there's tons of them. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, I, I would believe the outline you think. I, I don't believe that he used to be an atheist, and and so that sort of says, well, why are you lying? Sure. You sure. Know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, you're so, okay. it's absolutely. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I guess, that's, that's I, guess what I, would, I would just to make a quick point. Uh, I would say that like when atheists, sure. well, I can't speak for all atheists, obviously, right? Uh, I can speak for myself and tell you what I think. What like reasons I attack religion. Uh, I, and I really don't necessarily attack all versions of Christianity. I'm actually not so, uh, I don't have so many problems with the more liberal, uh, lighter versions of it, which I know. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I think that sort of all ideas are up for criticism, including my own. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, you know, if you're talking about, you know, somebody who's just, yeah, well, you know, I just love everybody. And that's, you know, Christ says to love everybody. Yeah, you know, really, I don't have a problem with them. It, it's sort of. You know, you're doing your thing. You're not really affecting anybody. Yeah, you know that you're not you're not the person I'm targeting in a video like this. Which I know, probably as someone who's a strict Bible believing Christian, you guys wouldn't really adhere to that. Um, but uh, the reason I do it is because I it, because you guys have a lot of power within our government and uh, and in the past um, and still to this day, um, there's lots of things that uh, I feel that Christianity promotes like anti-homosexuality uh they would they want to fight laws that allow gays to marry they want to fight laws that allow gays to adopt um so these things are very uh important to me i'm not a gay man i'm married i'm yeah so this is where where skylar's really pointing out the the actual effect like why so so matt powell's sort of like well why is it important i don't think it should be it, it he's saying well you're, you're affecting us and you're affecting people we love and it, it's brilliant by skylar he's sort of saying well it has to be discussed because you're doing things that i disagree with that's why it has to be discussed that's why you have to demonstrate that what you are in fact doing is for the greater good of society you can't just say hey God's working for the greater good of society. You've got to demonstrate that is actually the case. And from what it looks like from us and the rest of society and even some Christians, that what you're doing is not the best thing for our society. In fact, it's incredibly detrimental to a society. Married. I have a wife and two children by any means. Um, but, you know, I, I care about my fellow human beings and I don't want them deprived of the basic same rights that a straight couple could have. And I see that the influence that religion can have, and not all, like I said, there's lots of Christians who raise good families and don't do terrible things to their kids. And 
Um, but there's also Christian families um, that I, I think teach them beliefs that are very, very dangerous um, for them to grow up with that kind of very warp their minds and make them believe. And I'm not talking about some sim- simple stuff like, Hey, I believe in Jesus, my savior and you know, God loves me and things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things like in different churches where people who can't get blood transfusions, if you're a Jehovah's witness or. Yeah. So t- Skylar's doing an excellent job here of sort of saying, Hey, your core beliefs, I have no problem with. I've only got the problem with the ones that, that affect, um, sort of society and us and and sort of you know themselves kind of thing like um he's doing a really good job to differentiate where his position lies and sort of say hey your core fundamental beliefs have at it like go for it if as long as it affects nobody else you can go for it but i care if your kid can't get a blood transfusion it's excellent by 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 skylar here um people aren't uh, receiving medical treatment because they think jesus is going to heal them but that, that's how I would say uh, why I'm sort of against uh, religion, some of the dangers that I see. Sure. Yeah, that's completely understandable. There is a lot of, there's like the Jehovah's Witness. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I believe they're a cult, you know, and to, to our religious sect. We- so, yes, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Fundamentalists are immune to irony. Like you literally go to a compound and, you know, sort of that is that is vastly monitored. People work for free. I, I you know, I, as I understand it, he's kind of distanced himself from Hoven. But, um, you know, for, for him to sort of say, hey, you're part of a cult is kind of to me, it's ironic because I would call Hoven's compound a, a cult. It really does have that. You know, I, I think um, me with uh, um, I, I think maybe it was Ember and a couple of people went through sort of the designations of a cult. Um, it might have been somebody else, but sort of you know, it, it kind of ticks all the boxes um, and under under a cult kind of thing. We would can we would look at them and consider them an absolute cult. You know, I would say it better it'd be better to be like a Mormon mm-hmm. or some other even you know less less crazy cult than to be uh, you know affiliated with something like that. But, uh, but yeah, you, you did pr- basically pretty much describe me. I'm, I'm very radical. I mean, a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Uh, that, the first true thing you've said this entire time. People ask me, you know, a lot of people tell me all the time, oh, you're so radical. I, I'm, a very, I'm a very radical Christian, very conservative. And, you know, I believe that one of the reasons that our country is actually going downhill is because the conservative Christians are actually being kicked out of the White House. You know, and the, the morals that our country are founded on, and as far as homosexuality goes, you know, I, I believe the Bible puts a death penalty on it. I believe it's I believe it's disgusting. And incidentally, at every uh, every just just to clarify, he doesn't think that the death penalty for homosexuals is disgusting like I do. He thinks that homosexuality is disgusting because he is a piece of trash. Scientific test has come back and said that homosexuals are 50 more times likely to get AIDS. OK, so this this rhetoric. Oh, well, it's bad for you. So that's why I'm opposed to it. OK. So this just shows the, the, the bias that he has because the, the, the causes of death in America, like, for instance, if you lead an unhealthy life and, like, eat a lot of fast food, for instance, you will get heart disease, and that is one of the major things of killing in the U.S. But I don't see this prick in front of fast food restaurants protesting. Right. If you do uh, uh, extreme uh, sport like rock climbing and stuff, it's a lot more dangerous. Your lifestyle can have decisions that, you know, either put you at greater risk of disease or they can put you at greater risk of, um, you know, sort of being killed or being injured kind of thing. So for you to sit there and pick out gay people and say, oh, well, you know, they have a higher risk of getting a disease. Dude, dude, what what are you talking about? The thing that is probably going to kill you statistically in your life is not AIDS. It is it is heart disease. It is cancer. You know. So wh- where are you at the beaches protesting that 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 you know people who sunbathe get a high incidence of skin cancer? Where where are you for those people? You're not because because people's health is not your issue. That's not why you're doing this. So don't give me this, oh, well, oh, we're just looking out for the gay people because they're at higher risk. Of, no, you don't, you don't care. 
what you care about is is your hatred towards these people aids um so you know we got this aids thing spreading and uh, aids yeah so he's mentioned aids three times in a, in a, you know it's it, it's absolutely ridiculous there's things we can do to alleviate. We, we can use protection. We can, you know, and if you want to live a lifestyle that you're at higher risk of something, I, I don't see what, what are you talking about? There are some races of humans that get certain diseases more than others. It doesn't mean, like, but, but don't forget. Okay, so don't forget his solution to this of people getting disease is to kill them. That's his solution. Oh, really, Nitty? Um, I would like to fact check that. Um, you could, in, no, in fairness, you could still make the thing that that the the argument that that. Um, there's a higher percentage kind of thing, you know, so per, per, per capita kind of thing. But your point is well formed. I, I get that. Um, and yeah, that's 100% correct. That was 2022. Fact check. Nitty is correct as usual. Yep. So, um, so, so here's the thing as well. Um, if if God wants to stop um, AIDS, why doesn't he just stop AIDS? Why why kill all the gay people? Why doesn't he just stop AIDS? Why bring it in in the first place? What the hell is going on? Like, why is this even a thing for your all powerful? Anyway. But yeah, don't forget he wants to kill these people. It, it's and uh, AIDS.gov, CDC.gov. Mm -hmm. Get on there. It's it's a, it's a fact. He doesn't care about the well-being of people. He just hates gay people. Because if he cared about the well-being of people, he would be be lobbying the government to stop fatty foods and take the sh insane amount of sugar out of the stuff that that Americans eat. Like seriously, wh why aren't you? Why aren't you absolutely trying to stop? Why aren't you trying to get guns out of there? If you were serious about stopping harm to people, then you'd be lobbying against guns. But you're not. It's this one section of people's lifestyle that you have a problem with. The rest is fine. People can eat whatever they want. They can give their kids whatever fatty foods they want. They can give their kids all the sugar they want. They can they can cart round guns all they want. They can drive however they want. He doesn't care about that stuff, which I, I, is way more death and way more harm to society than the one thing he's decided to get on his high frigging horse about and decide that he's going to stop. Don't Don't be fooled by this rhetoric. This is not about health for people this is about there is something that this tool does not like and he's going to this is an excuse this is an excuse the fact uh you know that this is that this is the case and so you know but incidentally god's word just happened to get it right before this all came out so that's yeah god's word didn't get it right like seriously aids wasn't even a thing back then it wasn't even a thing. And and heterosexual people can get AIDS just as, well, not just as easily. There's definitely more transmission. But there's nothing to say that this was exclusively um, a homosexual problem. For all we know, it, it just is not transmitted as fast. So it, it did not occur as fast during to the heterosexual community. And if this is some sort of, oh, well, we're going to, you know, um, um, we're going to punish the gay people or, or for some reason sort of make gay people kind of thing, um, then, then why did he do it at all? I, I, like, why make it able to be transmitted to heterosexual people? And, and it doesn't matter how good a Christian you are. AIDS doesn't care about that. It's a virus, dude. It's not some supernatural 
sort of, oh, well, you know, it's just a virus. If God's so down on, on gay people, why make them gay? Oh, but he doesn't think it's a choice, by the way, which is just silly. Well, that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. So, well, I, I maybe go into those statistics in just a minute because I want to look that up actually and see if that's true. Uh, but irrelevant of that, uh, just because e even if I was to grant you that, let's just grant you that for a moment, that gay people are getting AIDS more, which I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Uh, that doesn't if have any, like, sure. Well, if even if I grant you that, like I said, I grant you that premise and I don't believe that that's the case. Um, I would say that, so what? Why can't gay monogamous people, people who aren't having uh, sex with multiple people unprotected, uh, why don't they, shouldn't they have the right to love each other and adopt children and things like that? Yes, yes, they should. They, they, their relationship should just be as valid as any other relationships in society. And just because your book says something doesn't mean the rest of society have to lockstep in line. This, this entire privileged position of Christians sort of saying, hey, our book is the foundation of all things. I, I think that the world's waking up from that. Like we're sort of seeing it as, well, hang on a second. Why is your religion supposed to be the foundation for everything in our society? Um, especially since we've just sort of, you know, had this industrial revolution which has shown us that a lot of the ideas that you have don't actually work i don't see why would we be using your book as as a model for society in the first place you know it's sort of um you know we, we've we've realized that that hey you're lagging behind where we have to be to make these societies work so how are you the the, the moral guide when you're struggling to catch up with with the morals that people are putting into practice every day. And Matt Powell's definitely struggling to catch up. I mean, he's advocating for death of, of, of gay people. He is he is so far left behind in the moral thing. He's sitting in the mud. I, I... Now, just well, because you're gay doesn't mean that you're predetermined to have more AIDS. There's nothing about biologically being gay that makes you have more AIDS. Now, promiscuous choices can make you have a higher age rate if you choose not to wear protection or you choose to have more partners without protection. Absolutely. Um, but now, did you, you mention something? You don't believe that gay people could, should be stoned to death, do you? Well, I believe the Bible puts a death penalty on it. Obviously not by me or by anybody, you know, in, in, in our regular society. Obviously, I believe it's the government's job to... Why not by you? Why not by you? You're, you're just basically palming off onto the government something that you won't do yourself. I mean, if you look at the, the punishments in the Old Testament, generally they were rounded up, put in front of the, the, you know, taken to the tabernacle and stoned in front of the tabernacle by everybody. Everybody was made complicit in this horrible act. So it was it was everybody that threw stones at the person. Um, but, you know, what, 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 and, and, and don't get me wrong, this is, this is, this is kind of, I wish my mind wouldn't go down this track because um, I don't want to encourage Matt Powell's bloodlust for the average person, like I, I or, or you know, whatever he's is, his self righteous or or God given, you know, punitive crap that he's going on here. I don't want to encourage it at all. But if you are a sincere believer and that God has determined this punishment for people. Like, why are you sort of saying, oh, we'll leave it to the government? Like, why wouldn't you you do that? And and I don't want to encourage him. I really don't. Um, I, I don't know why you would say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to enforce God's laws because of these everyday, you know, laws. I mean, I presume it's because Matt Powell doesn't want to go to jail. I, I, that's what I would presume. Um, but I'm saying that sort of how much does he really believe in this if he's not willing to take things into his own hands to uphold God's law? And having said that, that's a horrible thought. Please do not uphold God's, God's law. Please don't do that. And and I, I regret even saying it right now because, um, I mean, while you can, you can sort of make that argument, I, I don't want to encourage these people. 
people have done these awful, awful things, thinking that that you know God wants them to um do it. Oh, hello, Bree. I, I didn't see you there. Welcome so much. Um, yeah, Bree knows just how much of a tool this man is. Like you know, if if anybody knows, it's definitely Bree. Oh, just like look. Bree, darling, what even watching this stuff is just wow. I uh, I promised I would do this for pride. Like I promised I would do this to myself. I know I don't I didn't promise to anybody in particular, just myself, but I'm gonna get through this. Help me. Help me get through this. Uh, to execute criminals. And you know, I believe that the Bible says clearly that homosexuality is a it's a criminal crime. It's a it's a it's a crime. It's one of the worst crimes ever. Right? Yeah, but we don't see any reason to enforce that upon our societies. It, it's not doing anybody to harm anybody. And like I said, like there's other things that can make you susceptible to disease, like eating cheeseburgers every day, or or the the, the sheer like the sheer amount of sugar in American foods. But no, you're not you're not protesting the sugar movement, you know, or the the sugar lobby. You're you're, you're protesting gay people. Unless you're having sex with gay people, Matt Powell, and I wouldn't put it past him, um, I, 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 I don't see how you're affected in any way. I, I mean, it's good that we're not a theocracy, theocracy, right? Because we're not a theocracy in this country. So you don't believe yeah, our government well, should be able to dictate uh, that we stone gay. Are you, is that what you're advocating for? Is that our government should stone gays to death? I, I, them? I, I don't, by whatever means, they execute people. And obviously, I believe in humane you know, putting to death. I think that's a good you know, what you're saying, humane. Yeah, so so here's the thing. Like he actually does believe in in stoning pet because if you if you if you want to say hey the the Bible says explicitly this, you can't take stoning out of there. That is the punishment decreed. Um you know he's kind of dodging and sort of skirting around it, but absolutely that's what he thinks. It, it's incredible. It's incredible to sit here in 2023 and say, hey, you know, th this guy wants to stone people to death for being gay. It, it's insane. It's insane. And and I, I've done like sort of multiple debates on, on the death penalty. I absolutely reject the death penalty for anything. And I reject any penalty for being gay. It's not a crime. It's not a crime. And And if I get my way, it never will be. I mean, holy crap! Like seriously, like you, you are you are advocating killing an insane amount of people. Humane. You can't use the word humane and then say you're going to kill people who are gay. Right, but the thing is, I mean, whatever the whatever our government says, as far as like for a death penalty, I think should go for them. Well, what are you going to use? I mean, you could point to lethal injection. Lethal injection, when it goes wrong, it is insanely inhumane. And and how, what what is the process you're going to follow? Like this is this is some. Did you ever see that movie V for Vendetta? This is some V for Vendetta crap where you're going around with Gestapo, rounding up people for being gay, throwing bags over their heads. I, I mean, crap! It 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 is it is. Can you imagine the dystopian nightmare that would be Matt Powell's America? Like where you round up gay people, you know? Oh, have you ever slept with a, with a, with another man? Let, let's put you in the the wagon, take you off to the gas chamber. Like it is a dystopian nightmare of a society. What? Wait, 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 wait. So no, but you're saying you agree that that the government should create laws that, um, in order to execute gay people. That's what you're telling me. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so I just want to point out here that Skylar Fiction, the amazing job he does of not going, you're a complete monster and how dare you. He, he keeps his calm because he wants to sort of find out the limit of this, um, of this um, sort of these beliefs kind of thing. So I, I look... I, I can tell that, that Skylar is disturbed by this. Like, you can tell, right? This this thing says it all. Oh, holy crap. Yeah, no, I'm with you, Skylar. I really am. And and this was ages ago, but, you know, you can sort of tell. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and Skylar does a fantastic job, keeps calm, 
and goes, okay, let's let's find out how deep this rabbit hole goes. Um, thank you, Skylar, taking one for the team. That's what the, that's what the Bible says. I, I believe the Bible. I didn't write the Bible. Well, you're talking no, any, about, anybody can. You're talking about the old. Anybody Testament, can, right? You're referring to Old Testament. Well, it's the New Testament too. True. Romans chapter one says that God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are filthy and mm -hmm. disgusting. So, you know, that's uh, even even the general population. Let's mm -hmm. you know, Skyway. Let's just talk about the general population. Even the general population. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think like it really mentions gay people in the New Testament. I mean, when he's sitting there saying, um, you know, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, um, uh, you know, it doesn't actually say any specific act that, that makes that so. Um, it basically just says that, um, you know, uh, wicked people are retrobate, essentially. Um, but he, he's interpreting that. Um, to, to mean so it's Romans uh one twenty eight uh or so yeah see it doesn't really say any acts it just says that and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of woman burned in their lust towards an, another men, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of the error that were made so it doesn't it doesn't sort of say anything about about um um taking any action against them like it doesn't say like you know their blood shall be upon them like it does in the old testament it just says they're of a retrobate mind so um and it's not the only thing that i mean he called um, don't forget, he called um, 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 raging atheist. He called knock a reprobate, right? He calls a lot of people reprobates. Okay, he calls atheists reprobates. And so, if you're going by the idea that a reprobate should be stoned to death, then um, you're essentially saying anyone you're calling a reprobate is should be stoned to death. Like he's saying, atheists should be stoned to death general population looks at these people as like something is really different here well no you know, right. as a, as a, no the general population looks at these people and goes oh that's fantastic they're really having fun like that pal and i'll show you later he has no idea what the general population think just saying oh and we got our first super chat nara uh nara i don't see anything written there did you want to like say something or is it just a just a gratuity um, but thank you so much for five dollars coming through with the super chat. If you do want to say something, please do let me know. I'll try and I'll try and get to it and and sort of say it. Um, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. As, a, as an overall whole, and yeah. I'm not saying we I shouldn't think, be accepted. I don't know you. That's just a general. That's your opinion that the overall population. Yeah, and and Skylar's sort of you know I, I love it. He challenges that because that is that is where Matt Powell is wrong. The general population doesn't think this at all. Statistically, we can show that the general population accepts gay people. Um, uh, the general population accepts trans people. Um, in the US, it, it's sort of, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm, it depends what country you're from, of course. It depends on, um, you know, sort of, sort of, the areas that you're in and things like that but but um generally people people do accept it i mean it, it and in the us it isn't huge for trans people i believe it's about 60 percent support trans and it's about 40 percent, which is horrifying quite frankly but um the whole idea that the general or just everybody thinks no that's not right you're, you're just using and even if they did it would still be an ad populum fallacy but you know population uh blows that but so i guess by your logic then then we should children who disobey their parents should be stoned to death too right beautiful yes yes that's what the bible says well the bible says that the wages of sin is death and you have to understand that at that well, time there question. were certain no, no, circumstances no, no. Wait, let's not get away no no because you you said that you're using the bible yeah so you can see how skirting and dodging the issues here like so, under the Old Testament, it says you're also stoned to death children that are dis unruly, right? 
oh, well, you've got to understand that the wage that, I mean, it's a politician's answer. And, and Scala, to his credit, doesn't allow them just to trot away from that one, you know, sort of, oh, well, I'm not going to say what I really think, because, but, you know, hyperbolically speaking, the wages of sin, no, just answer, answer the question. Using the Bible's theology of the Old Testament to justify oh. the government stoning gay people to death. Well, let's look at the other things that you could be stoned and executed for. So disobeying your, if the children disobeyed their parents, they could be executed. Do you support that also to be consistent right. if, with if, worldview? If, if a child lives in open rebellion and they're receiving correction, 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 and they're not listening, obviously the Bible says that they should be put to death. That's what the Bible says. Well, I make no apology. So, yeah, he is now advocating for stoning to death children. Um, oh, thank you so much, Nara. You, Nara just did a, uh, just supporting. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And and gifted memberships. You're a, a scholar and, and a saint. And, and, you know, your penis weighs a pound. Thank you so much, Nara. Um, the, 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 um, the, the, the whole idea that you're going to have unruly children and stone them to death, that, that he just supported that. And see, the, the thing that I keep coming back to is Nock knows all of this. He knows the hate and vitriol that comes out of this, this, this person. I don't understand why he's cozying up to this man. This man. No I'm, apology I'm for it. Sure. I'm just yeah. asking, do you agree with that? Absolutely. The thing Absolutely. Like, I, I, I don't know. Now that he has a daughter, because I think he does have a daughter now, would you stone her to death if she was unruly and, and wouldn't be corrected and wouldn't, wouldn't you know, change her attitude? The thing is, it's not like a one-time thing, though. It's not like, okay, my kid messes up, so I'm going to stone him to death. You know, obviously, there's there's ways. I mean, if they just how many how many times would you give them before you'd stone them to death? Stone them to death. Yeah, yeah. So this is awesome by Scala. Like, well, let's let's find out the the specifics of 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 your your death march for children here. How many? And and again, I just want to point out the Scalas. Instead of going, how dare you, you absolute freaking monster. He's going. Well, let's. Let's pin you down. Let's let's you know. And and the fact that um, Matt Powell thinks this is ordinary. This is what this is what should be happening. This is completely fine. It, it's evil on a whole nother level where he's not even aware, or or he seems like he's not even aware of the the gross evil and the dystopian monstrousness of what he's suggesting. Well, that's not up to me. That's up to the government. The Bible says well, that. Wait, 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 hold on. How would you pass that? Why would you pass that burden on the government? They're just people. Those are, it isn't like well, the government's some kind of computer that can make ultimate moral well, because choices. That's, because that's what the Bible says. It says that you shall bring the child with two or three witnesses that have seen this thing happen, take him before the courts. The court has to make the decision. Well, what, so it's not so like how would you, you, judge, you know how would you judge this. So if 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 Matt Powell has his way, I suggest that everybody like we get at least two or three people to say that Matt Powell is gay and drag him up there, quite frankly. Um, but no, I don't want to kill anybody. I, I don't, I don't think anybody should be put to death. I, I don't think, I don't think that's healthy. I, I think that a, a society that implements, that exchanges justice for violence or, or, or implements violence in, in their, as a, as a part of their justice intentionally is doing itself a disservice. I think that there is no way um, to, imp to, you know, I, I understand that sometimes police and things have to be violent. I get that. I, I do get that. I'm not sort of saying they don't. But when your judicial system is handing out violence as a punishment, I think it demeans the entire society. Um, I think that is not a good thing. Judge disobedience on that level. I don't know. I wasn't there in Bible days, so well, I, I can't tell. You're advocating for it right now. You're just saying that that's what the Bible agrees with, and we should put that into law. So I'm asking, how would Absolutely. you do that? Well, how, why how, do you, how would you write? Okay. So we vote for our we vote for our government officials, right? And those government officials make laws based on what we who we elect. So the people that you would elect, what would you want them to deem 
as being you know disrespectful to their bear. And again, Escala's really good. He's going okay. What are the specifics of this this horrendous dystopian nightmare that you're advocating for? It's disobedient. How many times do they do that before you'd say kill the kid? What what's your question basically? So you're uh, asking, I'm, yeah, I'm asking like what I mean. How many times would you would you give a kid to be disobedient before you tell the government so, to stone them? So you take him to the court. If the court if it re- if he rejects to hear the court, if he rejects to hear two or three witnesses, the Bible says they should be put to death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Yeah, but what is I'm disobedience? Sorry. Define disobedience according to the Bible. So dis- yeah, so so he's basically sort of pinning him down to saying, hey. Yeah, if, if there's two or three witnesses and they say that the child's been violent, then we should put a child to death. Obedience is, you know, the Bible says, children, be obedient to your parents and all things for this is right. Mm-hmm. So children are to obey their parents. That's what the Bible says. You know, and we wouldn't have all these crazy things. We wouldn't have all this stuff going on in juvenile homes. We wouldn't have all this insanity going on if parents would actually just discipline their kids on a, on a, on a regular parental level. Yeah, so you, you've got no idea that is the case, and you've got no idea what like sort of. So, if, if people started putting kids to 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 death, that would be the end of our society or the end of that government. Like you could not get that to work. And I would also hazard a guess that if your if your child Matt Powell grows up into a teenager and is rebellious and sort of is is unruly, um, I feel like he wouldn't be advocating for the death of his own child. Um, I, 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 if he does, then that child probably should be taken off of him because somebody advocating for the death of children should not be raising children. You don't, you don't get to um, healthy relationships through fear. That is not how you get to a healthy relationship. That that's how you get to trauma. Um, like this guy, he, he he has has no understanding of, of how humans in general operate. Level, and, and but we, Skyler, we don't have that today, and we wouldn't. Have, I mean, you have. Yeah, they did what they did, and I don't support that either. So you know, that's what aboutism is. What that is. So anytime somebody says, "Hey, putting children to death are wrong," and you go, "Oh, but the you know fill in the blank put children to death, or they cause children to die," it's called what aboutism. Or, as your mother might have told you, two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, you we have wouldn't to... have a lot of kids if we passed laws like this because they'd be executed. Well, m- modern day, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, I mean, they, that would be on your hands, right? Uh, you're, tra- you're not yeah, trolling me, right? Like, you are really a Christian. Like, this isn't a troll. Absolutely. Uh, you're, absolutely. you're just probably the most extreme, besides Westboro Baptist yeah. Church I've ever met um yeah, no, no it's I fine mean, if these are your beliefs that's fine i'm not trying to like yeah I, i'm not saying i would ever i would not i'm not saying skyway let me just put this out there for the viewers i'm not saying i would ever execute my kid well the bible would, says that you bring him to the court yeah but, the court they, but you would be fine. <laughs> yeah no i'd never execute my kid i would take them to the court to be executed are you crazy <laughs> what like i i i this whole thing of of you know if if you're not willing to do it yourself okay if you're not willing to do it yourself you can't expect others to do it on your behalf right it's like it's the reason why that if you get a hitman to kill your spouse you're still up for murder because you were the one that allowed that to happen like this sort of externalization of guilt sort of saying well i'm not executing anybody I'm merely advocating for the government to execute it. So it's nothing to do with... Of course it's something to do with you. You're the one advocating it. You giant tool. Um, I... I mean, I don't even know. And, and like, I love how Tyler, you're not, you're not trolling me, are you? Because, yeah, you, that's what you would think at first. This has to be a troll. This has to be a troll. You would be fine with the court doing it if they made certain decision. Yeah. Un, un, under certain circumstances, excuse me, under certain circumstances, sure. So let's it depends say, on the circumstance. Let's if say they murder they somebody. No, no, no. Well, murder is one thing because that's that that we can actually look into, and they, that's actually you can be put to death depending on the state. Let's say your kid just didn't listen to you his curfew, 
Every night, you told him a curfew of 8 o'clock. He's a teenager. He broke his curfew 10 times in a row. He's being disobedient. Why can't we execute <laughs> okay. him? How, yeah, how, but that's what I'm getting at. My point is, okay. is how, do you, how do you determine yeah. what disobedience okay. is? Okay, but Skyler, here's the issue. Mm -hmm. you, you've talked to so many Christians that say, well, all sin is equal. Well, the truth is that not all sins equal. There are certain sins that are much worse than others. You know, Jesus said to Caesar, he that delivered you unto me hath the greater sin. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. Like, no, no, not all. Um, I mean, I don't know what, what he means by sin, but not, not all acts are equal in the eyes of the law. It's why we have different sentencing for different things. And the idea that just simply for being unruly to your parents, you're given death is a vast, you know, but he's not sort of saying, hey, change the laws so, you know, drunk drivers are given death. Like, how could you have a legal system? Because the Bible says nothing about drunk driving, strangely enough, or vehicular manslaughter, say. Right, the Bible has nothing to say about that. Strangely enough, maybe it's because they didn't have cars. Probably, just just a thought. But um, like you would have somebody committing vehicular manslaughter, you know, be be put in prison for a couple of years and you know be fined and all the usual you know penalty for that kind of thing. Um, and you'd have a child being disobedient being killed by the government. Like, can you imagine these punishments side by side? There is no situation where you would say, hey, one thing deserves, you know, imprisonment and a fine, and the other deserves death. That that would be one of the most ridiculous things I would ever see. So all sin is not equal. If some kid messes up on his curfew, he's going to get spanked and spanked and spanked. And you know what? If he doesn't listen, then he's going to, then he's going to have to deal with the repercussions. And it's not going to end up, I'm not going to take a kid like deal with the repercussions and the repercussions here is death. That's what the repercussions are. To court and say, well, he wasn't coming home on time, so we're going to stone him. Obviously, it's got to be a huge deal. And every instance in the Bible was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And every time... That one was somebody picking up sticks. What are you talking about? Like one was a, a dude just picking up sticks was, was stoned to death by Moses. Like it wasn't a huge deal. I mean, maybe it was a huge deal to God, but it wasn't a huge deal to anybody else. Are, are we going to kill people for working on the Sabbath? Because that's the prescribed punishment for that too. You know, you make a phone call on the Sabbath and suddenly Matt Powell's Gestapo is knocking down the door and, you know, wanting to stone you to death. Time that you don't see it laid out perfectly what happened, just read another parallel passage and you'll see it's very clear. Uh, could you get the death penalty for divorce in the Old Testament? The death penalty for what? For divorce? I don't know anything about the death penalty for divorce. So what I'll about adultery? I think adultery you can get the death penalty. So you believe yeah, absolutely. the government should yeah. regulate and kill people who uh, cheat on their spouses? Absolutely. I believe it's the I believe it's part of the death penalty. Skyler. Yeah, so so let, let's go through this. Gay people, trans people, people that pick up sticks, children, people that cheat. Like the amount of death this guy is advocating for is un just unruly. Like, uh, you know, this guy is is is. Skyler, I I'm I'm like absolutely to the. You you look at the Bible and mm -hmm. you look at me. I I'm right to the Bible. I I believe the Bible. I mean, sure. You know, and the the thing is that belief is based solely off emotion. Where you're coming from is just a. Yeah. So this is this is why I have difficulty believing he was ever an atheist, because. You know this sort of well. I believe in the Bible so stringently. It 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 speaks of a fundamentalist upbringing. To be honest with you, from is just a solely. It's not based off any logic. It's not based oh. off of how God feels about it. Well, I, I don't believe there's a God, but um, but let's take that. So you're you're. Let's talk about morality and these. And if we're gonna okay. Well, I mean that's sort of they go to general morality, but um, there is a um. There is a, another thing. So this is from four months ago. So this is a lot more recent kind of thing. The definition of pride, and you could even pull it up in a Webster's Dictionary, is this. It's too high of an opinion of one's own ability or self-worth. 
Okay, so so keep that in mind. So he's talking about pride, right? This is his anti-pride thing. And and if we can get some pride flags, um, transgender flags in the um in in the chat, I would really appreciate it. Um so I, I looked this up before. So I was sort of like, hmm, that doesn't sound like a definition of pride that I've ever heard. Like, what? Where did he get this definition? This this is great. This is fantastic. So he said he got it from Merriam Webster. So should we go to Merriam Webster? Should we should we fact check? Should we fact check Matt Powell? Give me some whys in the chat for uh, fact checking Matt Powell. Who wants to fact check Matt Powell? He got it for um he got it for for from Miriam Webster. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, right. Um he got it from Miriam Webster. So let's go to Miriam Webster. Here's pride in Miriam Webster online dictionary. Um so so um let's see what what did he what did he say what the dictionary definition was? His own ability or self worth one's own I have an opinion of one this it's too high of an opinion of one's own ability or self-worth. Too high an opinion of one's own ability and self-worth. Well, it's not number one, quality or state of being proud. Uh, sorry, I, 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 switching tabs is still new to me. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, too high an ability. No, that's not that one. That's just the quality or state. A reasonable self-esteem, confident action. Oh, it's not that one either. It's not. It's not number one. Uh, pleasure that comes from some relationship, association, achievement, or possession that is seen as a source of honor, respect. Well, it's not that one either. Huh. Exaggerated self-esteem, conceit. Well, it's, it, it kind of sounds like that, but it's not exactly that one either. Sometimes pride. Respect and appreciation for oneself and others as members of a group and especially a marginalized group. Solidarity with a group based upon shared identity, history, and experience. And the usage is a symbol of gay pride. Um, that seems to be the most relevant, or the next one seems to be the most relevant. Usually, right? So it says usually the way that it's 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 done. Pride, an event or series of events celebrating and affirming the rights, equality, and culture of LGBTQ people. Do you think it's that's the definition that we're using? Of course not. No. Um, a source of pride, personal things that make you feel proud. A group of lions living together. I'm pretty sure he wasn't referring to that one. A showy or pretentious group. Ostentatious or showy display. The most active. Okay, so we've been through um, one, two, three, four, five. One's kind of similar. But he didn't get that definition from these ones, right? None of them was the one that he read out. So let's hear it again. Let, let's hear it again. This, it's too high of an opinion of one's own ability or self-worth. Too high an opinion of one's ability or... None of those were in the dictionary on Merriam-Webster. Wait, oh wait, the kids' definition. We've got the kids' definition. So the children's dictionary, we've got this. Too high an opinion of one's own ability or self-worth. Oh, so he got this from the children's dictionary of Merriam Webster. I mean, there's there's cherry picking, and then there is going through to an adjacent tree and picking the cherry out of that one. Like seriously, he got it from a kid's dictionary instead of the main dictionary. So he not only had to skip all of these definitions, he skipped the adult dictionary and went down to the kids one. I mean, 
Seriously? Like, if you're going to misrepresent through definitions, at least get the adult definition. Matt Pal, you are a giant tool. Worth. Right. That's too bad that certain Americans and certain people... Certain children. ...would identify with that. We should identify with humility. And even God's word says that pride goeth before... Yeah, so... Um, out of all your definitions, you're taking the kids one. And because and, and why is he doing that? It's because the one it most suits what he wants to point out. It is so dishonest to take this idea and like go, well, I'm going to use this particular definition and I'm going to use it from the kids did. Well, the normal definitions, they're not, they're not really, you know, what I'm after. So I'm going to go to the kids dictionary, get the definition from that one, because that one really looks bad goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before fall. In this nation, we will fall if we identify with pride or if we ourselves are... You will fall if you... You've got nothing to suggest that. You, you've got nothing to suggest that. I mean, I am proud of some of the things that I do. I'm proud of, of the person that I've, I've sort of developed into. I'm proud of the, the debates and the work that I do. You can be proud without being overly haughty about it. You can say, hey, I did a good job. I am proud of the job that I did. Or um, I am proud of the person that I've turned into. Or I'm I'm proud to be associated with these people. That doesn't mean you're overly haughty. It just means it's a sense of confidence and, and self-worth that, that you have achieved something or, you know, sort of support something. That's it. And I don't care what your book says. I don't care that it says pride goeth before the fall. I think there's like pride as in like, you know, too prideful to ask for help kind of thing. But that doesn't necessarily mean that all pride is bad. And it's weird because I see a lot of Christians take pride in their work, in their lives, in the things that they achieve. And that's okay. They, You know, you work hard, you achieve something, you should be. I don't, I don't see why that's a negative emotion. Selves are of an arrogant attitude or a bigoted spirit. No, it's not arrogant. If you worked really hard for something and succeeded and went, hey, I'm proud of that, that is not arrogant. That, that is just being um, confident in the things that you have done. It's just affirming that you, you worked hard. What, what, why is this arrogant? Oh, I'm sorry. You're supposed to give God the credit for it. Well... You know, I spirit. We should have a humble attitude about us as people. You know, the Bible says that righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to anyone. No one cares. No one cares what the Bible says. You know, it, it's sort of and righteousness. Righteousness is 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 to me anyway. Righteousness is the idea that what you're doing is absolutely right regardless of any evidence to the contrary, like regardless of what's happening to people, righteousness is kind of this, I'm right no matter what. And I don't see it as a plus. Like I, I have to acknowledge the fact that I can be wrong about things. And, and I think that, you know, you're sort of, it, it's, it's a mixed message because you're saying be humble, but be righteous, like this idea. So it's basically be humble except for your righteousness with God, the things that you believe about God. And and why, that just seems remarkably contradictory. Well, to me anyway. Approach to any people. And the fear of the Lord is to hate pride, arrogancy, and the evil way. We should hate pride. We should love humility. God bless. Ugh. Ugh. And uh, look, it's not even the pride definition that you're using, you colossal tool. You colossal, colossal tool. Yeah, so that's why well, that's why Matt Powell won't say, you know, it's not his hatred of the gays and and you know the 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 trans community, why he's not silly. No, it's got nothing to do with his bigotry. No, it's got all to do with the kids' definition of pride he found in the children's Miriam Webster. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Sure, sure, Matt Powell, you colossal tool. Okay, and so this this came out a while back. It's just a short. Um, this is this is sort of yeah. I, I just want to share this little clip to take away the opportunity of your spouse who thought that she married a man. 
and pump yourself full of it. To the music, it's just, it's so manipulative. Like, oh, let, let's think of the poor wife. I, I, I yeah, no, I, I get it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's bad for her. I get you. It's not like he did it on purpose. This is, this is um, Chris Tyson, who's Mr. Beast, uh, one of his producers. And, and sort of so um, every single Christian has sort of, you know, latched onto this because of Mr. Beat's clout, basically, and gone, oh, you know, what, won't somebody think of his child and his wife and stuff and just, you know, just completely misconstrued what's happening here. Self full of estrogen. Make yourself look sickly and disgusting. It doesn't look sickly and disgusting. You look sickly and disgusting, sir. You look sickly and yeah. And then turn around and divorce her and tell your child that you're being your happiest self. Tell the world you're being your happiest self. All yeah, because it's not up to you to determine what makes others happy, Matt Powell. All the while rejecting your actual self is so selfish to take away yeah so so the whole thing is he's saying well i know the 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 the, the woman that you are now is not your actual self right um i know what your actual how arrogant do you have to be and this is sort of compare with with oh be humble be humble don't don't be arrogant don't be prideful. Don't don't sort of you know how arrogant do you have to be to tell somebody else what their happiest self is? The temerity of this man to say, "Hey, I know who you are." You colossal tool, Matt Powell. You are an idiot. Mr. Beast is probably the most famous YouTuber on the planet. He's got over 149 million subscribers, and he is considered the most successful YouTuber out there. He sure is, and he's worked hard, and he should be proud of his achievements. But no, you want him to be humble, and you want him to follow the Lord. And, and you know, his, his good friend who is probably going through a really tough time, you want him to, you know, add to that tough time by, by firing him and stuff. Matt Powell, you are a colossal tool. We're out there. But recently, his right-hand man, Chris Tyson, came out as transgender. Now, most people are condemning Chris's behavior, but some people are accepting it. And Most people... Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Most people are condemning Chris's behavior. No, they're not. That's the thing. That's the thing. He thinks because the people around him, the fundamentalists he surrounded himself with in his echo chamber, right, are are all agreeing with him, then that's most people. It's not most people. Most people are like, we support you 100%. And even promoting it. And that includes Mr. Beast himself. He is promoting this. And he said on Twitter that all of this transphobia is starting to really piss me off. Yeah, like, I, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. It's starting to piss me off too. Like, seriously, like, what are you doing? There is, n your Bible doesn't get a say in what's best for our society. It just doesn't. It doesn't. I, I, Lord Jesus, Mr. Beast, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it doesn't, your, your Bible doesn't get a say. It, it's outdated, it's archaic, you're, 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 you're reading from it and advocating death for children. It doesn't get a say. Like, it is the people that get the say, and, and most people are supporting the trans people. You know why? Because they're not doing anything to harm anybody. They're not advocating to put people to death. You are. They're not advocating to change people's lives. You are. They're not advocating to sort of, you know, make people do certain things that they don't, they feel uncomfortable with. You are. I don't. Me off. Chris Tyson claims that he actually did this for his son. Yeah, I believe that. I 100% believe that. Check out this tweet. He said, I know I'm going to be a great parent. And so is every other person who puts the love of their child before everything. 
I made this decision because I wanted to show up as my best and happiest self for him. In a way, this was for Tucker. Yes, and obviously you don't understand what that means. And I 100% support Chris in this. If you are a parent and you are miserable, your child is probably going to have an absolutely miserable life. If, if you're a parent and you are absolutely depressed because you are not you are not um you are not being yourself you, you are you are denying who you are and you are depressed and miserable and unhappy your child is not going to have a good life that that is what he's trying to say that by being true to himself honest with himself and and being the best person he can be even if that person is a woman he is giving the best thing for his child you know what's the best thing for his child? Himself, his true self, without having to put a mask on, without having to pretend to be somebody else, just being your true self and being honest. That, that is called self-actualization. You are who you are. And, and to teach that a child should self-actualize, should be all that they can be. Fucker. And he also went on to post a picture of his two-year-old son in high heels with a caption that said, Tucker chose to slay this morning. Yeah, so what? So what? That doesn't mean that, that his child's going to be trans. It doesn't mean anything's going to happen. It's just, look, this this whole, like, oh, the kid tried on high heels. I, I tried on high heels when I was a kid. It's just about every single kid tries on their mum's high heels when they're a kid. You guys are just going crazy over literally nothing. And, and you know, excuse me, excuse me, Eric, if that is the real Eric, which I doubt. It is beast of the mark. Thank you. I am a beast of the mark, not mark of the beast. Okay. Morning. What is this whole thing? Oh, my, my child wore high heels. So? Uh, why is that a problem? There's tons of kids that try on high heels. I don't. Now, this is just more proof that the transgender folks that can't figure out what gender they are, they're so delusional that they're not safe around kids. What are they delusional about? What aspect of the reality are they delusional about? This, this, is, this is something that's said all the time and that, that, you know, they have a delusion. What's the delusion? Because they'll come back and they'll say, oh, they think they were born, you know, biologically a, 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 a woman. No, they don't. They're very aware they weren't born that sex. They're very, very aware. That's not a delusion. You can't point to any delusion they have. That's the thing. You can't point to any, any delusion that they have. And so, you know, this is why Matt Powell doesn't get into debates anymore, because he's absolutely terrible. Kids. What could motivate this? Yeah, no, I love this comment, Amber. I love this comment. we got to protect the child, screamed the kid. Guy lived in a compound where no one protect the children. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. A truer statement has never been said. You know, so, so Eric, maybe if you want to protect children, uh, talk to your dad. Maybe talk to him for a second and try protecting children instead of, you know, having a compound where they um, die and, and, and are abused on a regular basis. Like maybe do that. And who is this? Why is this person got any say in, in what Chris, Chris Tyson do? Like what? Who is this? I, I don't know why this is in here. It's just like random woman makes comments. This. What even, how does one go from this, having a beautiful family and just throwing it all away for this? That's exactly what the description says. This is degeneracy. To take away the- Oh, this is degeneracy. Look, how can you throw it all away? He may not have been throwing it all away. Like this is the thing, just because you think this this sort of nuclear family or you know to be nuclear family is your dream and goal in life doesn't mean everybody's is like th th this is the temerity of the christians because i want a thing 
everyone should want a thing. Why would you ever think that? Why wouldn't you ever acknowledge that people um, um, wouldn't would um, would would not um, have different goals in life and different things? Maybe maybe this person was miserable in this situation. Oh well, that's okay. Just continue to be miserable and you know suck it up because that's what my book says. No, that's that's not how we, we do things in our society. We allow people to choose their path in life. Not just, you know, what, what are you talking about? Take away the opportunity of your spouse who thought that she married a man and pump yourself full of estrogen. Make yourself look sickly and disgusting. Yeah, yeah, we've heard this part. I can't even come and, and insult the entire... But he's acting like he's doing it on purpose. Like, oh, oh, he married his wife and just pulled one over on her and then, you know, divorced her and, and he got away with it and, you know, he set this up from this. Of course he didn't set it up from the start, you colossal tool. He 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 has may have suffered from gender dysphoria. I don't know. I don't know, Chris Tyson. I'm not going to designate. But this probably was not a, oh, well, I'm going to pretend and trick somebody come on dude like the way that he's framing this is oh how dare he do that to his wife he probably didn't know he just felt uncomfortable with who he was and as you get older realizations start to set in and i hope matt powell the realization that you are a giant tool sets in for you and you change oh it looks just like you. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, it's well, Jimmy. How did fan art? This is what we were looking for. <laughs> be brave, be honest, be kind, Mr. Mr. Beast. That is my tagline. But, of course, he says that he's going to be his... Yeah, be honest, be kind. Be kind. Matt Powell, be kind. Christians, be kind. Happiest self for his son. Yes. But he's going to castrate himself and no longer be a... F oh. And this is what we're getting. Like any any trans person that that decides to have any kind of trans affirming surgery is is definitely like the 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 misunderstand. Like you don't even understand the first thing about it, and you're making videos online about it. Like, come on, not all trans affirming care. Like I get emails with people saying, "Oh, so you support the castration of children?" Nobody's castrating children. You colossal, colossal tool longer be a father figure something that every child needs what just because you're not you, you know that it's a father figure like he can get that from other pl places like you can you can have like uncles and godfathers and i don't know mr beast like it's in the name mr beast like, you know that you don't need a father to have father figures, right, Matt? No, you're not up to date on how community parenting... Okay, well, sure, Matt. Look, every child needs a dad. They don't need two moms. They don't need two dads. They need a mom. Yeah, but if they have two dads or two moms, they can be raised perfectly fine, and everything shows us that that's the case. As long as they have enough figure in... in the, their lives then yeah as long as they have enough role models look everybody needs role models and, and figures to look up to I, I agree but just because your parents are both men doesn't mean that that that's closed off to you for some reason look even going through sort of teenage up to, to adult years you have mentors you have people that inspire and and sort of you know you follow their lead and direction you have these people it, they need a mom and a dad to create a balance in the home. Somebody tweeted and said that there's a father figure that the kid won't ever be able to look up to. And frankly, I could not agree with that more. You've stripped away your fatherhood. Uh, yeah, and you've got motherhood instead. Shut up, Matt. To try to replace the child's mother. I mean, how selfish, how disgusting.
How selfish. Yeah, how dare you try to be your authentic self for your child? How dare you try to live happily so your child can be happy? How dare you, you know, try to be yourself so, you know, you don't end up depressed and eventually commit suicide, robbing your child of, of a parent at all? How dare you? How dare you? Like, it's, it's not like this choice is sort of, you know, oh, oh, well, I want to do this. To, you know, it, it's just being honest with yourself. Something that I wish Matt would do because he's never on it. Like, you could see him skirting around, like, those questions of, oh, do you support killing kids that are unruly? Well, well, you know, there's there's... The, the, the sin the bible says that sin the, death is the wages of sin you're not being honest matt pal you're not saying what you really think you're not being who you really are i mean I'm, I'm, i can't say that i i really want you to be who you really are because who you really are seems to be a mass murdering um theocrat with delusions that killing off people is somehow going to make the world a better place but at least he's been who he is. Interesting that you would do that to your own wife. See, this decision to become trans not only affects you. To become trans. No, he is trans. Whether or not you do anything about it, you are trans. If you feel uncomfortable in the gender role that you are in and feel like you should be in another gender role, you are trans whether or not you do anything about it. It's not a decision to become trans. He just made a decision not to lie about it anymore. You, like this framing, and this is where Matt Powell's argument seems so trite and, and vapid to me because he always frames things like this. He always begs the question. He always has these closed arguments that sort of, you know, they're, they're entirely coming from his own worldview and he doesn't step outside of them for one second. It's no wonder he doesn't debate anymore. I, I would, I would... I would eviscerate this guy, absolutely eviscerate him. It affects you, it affects your wife, it affects your child. How is of course it does. Any decision does. Any decision does. But you know what? You know what? If I was that and my, my wife decided that, that she was trans and was now a he, I love her enough to support her in that. I do. That, that is what I would do because I love her. Life isn't easy. It isn't just, well, we get to be exactly what we want because we choose that. Um, you're coming from the position of, oh, you're, you're a cis white male and you've decided, and you've, you've decided that everybody else should be a cis white male as well. That isn't the case. It isn't as easy as that. This oversimplification of what's right and wrong. Oh, well, it's wrong if you come out and be trans. Choose to be trans. They don't choose to be trans. They just are trans. That's that's the reality of the situation. How is the child going to feel every day when he has to wake up to two moms? Uh, as long as they're not stigmatized by prejudicial people like you, Matt, probably fine because kids don't have the hate that you're trying to teach them. They don't, they don't have a problem with two mums until somebody like you comes along and says, hey, you should have a problem with that. Nice. Well, kudos to you, sir. Kudos to you. It's disgusting, the fact that they are... Who is this? Why is she relevant? Who are you and why are you relevant? Does anyone know who this is? Is this just some random girl inserted into the clip to say, hey, everybody's thinking this way? No, very few people. Most people are saying, you know, we support you, Chris. We support you, Mr. Beast. You're, you're still fantastic. They are involving children in this especially. If somebody in my family... So this, this is what, this is what um, John Stewart was pointing out. You're so concerned about the children, right? It's all about the children. The children, the children, the children. The leading cause of death for children in America is gun violence. 
That is the leading cause of death. So where is your outrage over that? Where are you protesting about guns on that? Like, wh wh what are you doing about that? But instead it's a, oh, well, won't somebody think of the children for this fuzzy idea of what may happen, maybe, that you can't even demonstrate is actually the case? My family decided to castrate themselves, leave their spouse. Yeah. So what? So what? They're not beating their kids. They're not, they're not denying them food or, 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 or sustenance or water. They're giving their children love. They're giving their children um, a, a quality home and, and things to play with. And, um, you know, this whole thing about um, being perfect parents, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. It doesn't exist. A perfect parent that gives their children exactly what they want all the time just makes spoiled children. That's all. A, a, a perfect parent is a parent that's good enough. And there are things that you go through in your childhood that you would rather not. They're not great. And your parents may not have all the answers and they may not do the right thing. That is part of growing up and realising that the world doesn't conform to how you want it to be. Um, I wish my parents hadn't been divorced. That is not my choice to make. And I would rather they be happy than together and miserable. That's the thing, pal. That's the thing you'll never understand. Is just you you probably your 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 parents probably never got divorced. You probably had a you know perfect childhood with everything given to you. So you think it's just that easy, and it's not. And and I would rather my parents be happy and live in a happy home where I'm loved than my parents being miserable because they're trying to please me with some sort of expectation that I don't have. Become a second mother to the child that they have and, you know, play this game of charades. It's not charades. Like, what, what, you, this, this sort of, yeah. And pump themselves full of estrogen. I would immediately condemn it because that's what a true friend would do. I would immediately stand up and say, no. No, no, a true friend would be supportive in their decisions for their life. Like, why do you think you're an awful friend? You're the guy that is advocating that if your kid is unruly, you're going to advocate the government to stone them to death. You are the worst friend and or human being. I Like, how are you possibly can sort of advocate for the killing of children that are, are unruly and then get up on a soapbox and say, hey, but them being trans is harmful to the children. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy is just insane, just insane. I'm not sure about how much more of this I can watch because seriously, this is just insane. Like, oh, won't somebody think of the children? This man is... is you know, taking estrogen and, and sort of, you know, presenting as a woman. But if your kid's unruly, let's stone them to death or let's get the government to stone them to death. Like, let's kill them. How can those two ideas together fit in a sane mind? That's my question. Like, how can you possibly say, hey, I'm thinking of the children and advocating killing children? How is that even possible? I, I don't understand how Matt Powell's ridiculously small head can fit both of those ideas in at the same time. I can say, no, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. But for Mr. Beast to get up and say, I support this. I support this, Matt Powell. I support this. If that's what he chooses, I support it. And if the stigma wasn't from people like you, he'd probably have a lot easier time and his child would probably have a lot easier time. The only reason why children are going, oh, well, I'm confused is because people like you are confusing them. I condone this. This is normal. What kind of a friend are you? If a good friend. A friend with unconditional love. Unlike you, Matt. 
you've got conditional love. You will only love people if they follow the Bible and, and they're up to your particular standards, which I might add includes killing children. And that's not an argument for emotion. That's showing that your two ideas are intellectually inconsistent because you're saying, let's not damage the children and let's kill children. Those ideas cannot exist together. They can't. You, if you're going to say something like that, that's not friendship. That's what we call hate. <laughs> that's what we call hate. That's what we call hate. But let's kill the gays and children and people that pick up sticks on the Sabbath and people that wear mixed fabric and people that, you know. <laughs> like, it's just projection at this point. You know, it's just projection. Oh, you call me a hater? You're a hater. You, you, you're, you're the one that hates. You, you know, affirming somebody's life decision and trying to support them through a difficult time. Now, that's hate. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being the good guy. What a colossal tool. And lies are built on hate. Truth is built on love. If you were honest with him, if you told him that he's not something that he claims to be, which is a woman, and if you'd be honest. Right. So that is merely a social construct. And I mean, I can pull it up. It, let, let's go to say the, um, let's go to the uh, American Psych Psychologist Association. Um, I was looking this up. I was looking this up the other day. I was, I was writing back to an email and looking this up. Um, so what do they have to say about it? Right? So if, if you want to, like, you're going to use your book as, oh, well, this is the authority, um, I would rather go to a place that studies this stuff, like just studies it kind of thing. What is the difference? Sex, between sex and gender. Sex is assigned at birth. Um, gender refers to the socially constructed roles, behavior, activities, and attributes that a given society considers appropriate for boys and men or girls and women. These influence the way that people act, interact, and feel about them themselves. While aspects of biological sex are similar across different cultures, aspects of gender may differ. So gender is not what you're referring to as sex. It's not. This is from the American Psychological Association, right? So these are people that study psychological and mental states. That's what they study, okay? And you can say, hey, my book says a thing. It, it, it really is outdated. Um, th this, is, this is going, and I, 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 I invite anybody to read this because this is um, diagnostically and scientifically, how we look at these things. There is nothing about gender that is physical, absolutely nothing. You'd be honest with him and tell him that he should not pump himself full of estrogen and mutilate his body. That would be the loving. He might not be doing that. He might not even be doing that. That's the thing. You you are just assuming that everybody that is trans is all doing the same thing. People have different paths. And quite frankly, it's none of your damn business what he is doing. But no, everything's your business because you're a Christian with a book. Get out of here, man. Like nobody cares about your book. It's old. It's outdated. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't get to say what happens in our society. That is up to us people. It, you, you don't get to tell us what to do anymore. Your time of controlling the world is over. Accept it. Move on. It would be the loving thing to do. But to sit back and just watch your friend destroy his existence and destroy his... Destroy his existence. Like, this This is the, 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 the emotive rhetoric that they use. Destroy his existence. He still exists, you colossal tool. Like, you really are just, just making stuff up at this point. He's destroying his existence. What if he's happier like this? What if he has a better life like this? What if his child has a better life like this? 
Who are you to say? Some guy who's advocating killing children. That's who you are. Some guy advocating hauling gay people out of their homes and putting them to death. That's who you are. So why would we care what you've got to think? Ugh. Destroy his wife and child in the process. They're not destroyed. She may have a happier life with somebody else. Did you ever consider that? Did you ever consider that that her, his wife may be unhappy and wants a better life? Did you ever even think about that? Of course not. It's the marriage that's important. It's staying in that marriage no matter how unhappy you are. And I hope that you're never put in that position. But if you are, I would hope that you would choose to be happy rather than preserve your marriage and be absolutely miserable. I mean, your, your idol, Hovind, has been married four times. Why does he get to go and choose to be happy with who he wants? And, and Chris doesn't. Why are the rules bent for him? That's really sad. And his poor wife. Oh, don't pretend like you care about his wife. Come on now. His poor wife. Maybe the wife will be happier. Did you ever think about that? She's not even afforded the dignity of her grief. Because if afforded the dignity of her grief. Yeah, I wonder why. It's because some people, like you, made a huge deal out of this. If she says anything, she's going to be accused of being transphobic. His son is wearing... Well, she, she can if she wants, but she's not. Has she said anything? Or are you just mansplaining to some woman here? Uh... So his wife's name is Katie. Yeah, and they're being very private about it. So, so I think I might, yeah, I, I kind of feel bad because I'm this this is going on for a lot longer than I expected. Maybe it just feels like a long time. I'm going to shut this down. I don't know who this is, right? I've got no idea who this is or why, um, why she's even relevant to this. Like, I've got no idea. It just seems to be some random commentator that Matt, the, the pontificator pal, has found and just sort of said, oh, look, everybody, th no, everybody doesn't think this way. Shut up, pal. They don't. How do you know that God? So this is just, this is an example of the, the fallacious and terrible reasoning of Matt Powell. This is probably why he doesn't debate anymore because, wow, like seriously, this is the level of his argument. Authors of the Bible. Well, for one, because of the power contained therein. Because of the power contained therein. What power? Is it 24 volts? Is it 240 house current? Well, what, what are we talking about here? What power? I mean, the fact that people find it emotionally powerful doesn't make it true. A, a lot of people find Lord of the Rings emotionally powerful. A lot of people find Game of Thrones emotionally powerful. Like, being emotionally powerful doesn't make something true. It just means that it's emotionally powerful. Poetry can be emotional. Music can be emotionally powerful. Movies can be emotionally powerful. It doesn't make them true. You know, the Pharisees, whenever they spoke of Christ, or even unbelievers that spoke of Christ, they said that never a man spake like this man. Uh, yeah, I mean, they can say that. doesn't make a trick. Can I also say this is music from Interstellar? And, and he's got like, he's got like the music, it's such a disservice to that music. I, I really like that music, and I hate you for using it, Matt Powell, seriously. 
Nobody talked quite like Jesus. We, we, we never, like nobody has ever sort of heard Jesus talk. All we've got is a story. That's the thing. How do you know that story is true? I. Nobody had as much power as he did in the realms of just the way that he spoke. Well, I heard Hitler was pretty convincing, um, you know, just, just saying, you know, and, and I think people in Islam would disagree with you. They would say that Muhammad spoke better than Jesus, or spake better than Jesus. Um, you know, uh, you're begging the question to say, hey, this is Jesus. This is what he said. Um, it's definitely all true. And you think of how the disciples of Christ were called Christians and how the unbelievers said that these are the men which have turned the world upside down. Yeah, you could say the same about ISIS, mate. It doesn't make it true. ISIS kind of turned the world upside down. Ever heard of something called 9-11? I... So, so, so making an impact on the world doesn't necessarily mean the reasons for that impact is true. And boy, did the terrorists in 9-11 make an impact. They made two, in fact, or three, rather, if you include the Pentagon. Um, they, the, the whole idea that just because something is significant, then the reasons for it must be true is just such a logical fallacy. There's a lot of things that have made an impact on the world. And you can say, hey, this made a huge impact. Yeah, so I have a lot of things, but you don't think they're true. And they did that because of the truth that they spoke and the authority that they had, just speaking the words of life, the words of eternal life. It's incredible. Okay, so how do you know it's eternal life? How, how do you know? You don't. You don't know. You've got no idea. You're just, just basically saying the book is true because the book is true. There's nothing that you've said that actually books backs up that the book is true. Your sort of appeal to, oh, well, there were these people and they believed and it had an impact on the world. That doesn't mean it's true. It just means that they believed it and it had an impact on the world. It's incredible to think that the Bible is actually authored by God. And not too long ago, a gentleman on the street asked me, How do you know? How do you know it was authored by God? How do you know? We don't even have the originals. We don't even know that um, Mark, Luke, um, uh, Peter, and, and um, John were, were authored by those people. Traditionally, that's say who authored them, but they don't have anywhere in them that I am, I am this person. Was it Peter, Mark? No, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, sorry. We know that Peter was probably authored by Peter. That, that's got fairly solid evidence. But the rest of it, we don't even know who wrote them. We just say, hey, that was Luke. That was Mark. That was John. Um, and traditionally, those are who they're associated with. But nowhere do they say, hey, I am John and I am writing this account. That's not what it says. So we don't even know for sure who wrote that. And we certainly don't have the originals. So how do you know it was written by God? Even if the originals are written by God, we don't have the originals to, to make sure that they haven't been changed in some way. We just don't have them. So how do you know? No, it's just your tradition and your religion says they were authored by God, and so that's what you believe. But when you actually go down to what is the foundations for that belief, it is just blind faith. That's all it is ask me why do you believe the bible is the word of god matt you know don't you realize that this is just a book that was written by man well here's the thing it is true that god used men to write his word was it written by god or is it written by man because there's there's some mistakes in there word but it doesn't mean that they're the author of the words that have been written down think of the fact that if i was to tell my wife to write something down and she wrote it down. Is she the author of what was written? Well, no, but you've got to prove that there is somebody behind these men. That's the thing. You can't just go, well, you know, um, they wrote it down, but it was somebody else dictating it to them. You've got to show that.
written? No, I would be the author of what she had written down. And the Bible tells us that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So God literally spoke through them and yeah, I, I God literally spoke through them. How do you know that? Like I know they said it in the book. That's what they said in the book. You're using the book to prove the book. So just sort of saying, oh, well, the book says that they spoke through them, that the Holy Spirit spoke through them. Yes, but that's assuming the book is true. You've got a circular argument here. I know the book is true because the book says it's true. Them And wrote through those men as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but the only thing you've got to prove that is the book. That's all you've got. You have no actual evidence that that actually happened. It's because the book says it happened. And so we're saying, how do you know the book's true? Well, the book says that God wrote through these... And they penned the word of God that was authored by God. And so, of course, God had to use men to write down his word. What else is he going to use? He's, he's an all-powerful, omnipotent being. He can use other things. He can just make a book appear. He doesn't have to use men. What, what, the, what kind of weak and... and Poultry God needs men to write for him. Does God have the polio? What's going on? I, I feel like I'm, I'm watching some crazy person like, but what else was God going to do? The all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing all God who created the universe. What else could he do? But you speak to somebody's man to write something down. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't understand. He use elephants? No, no, but he could if he wanted. He could just make them appear if he wanted. He could have lightning strike the ground and give us Joseph Smith's gold plates if he wanted. I, I don't... Animals? He had to use something that would be able to read his word be able to write down his word and communicate that and translate that really the omnipotent god of the universe needs you to be able to speak uh aramaic or greek probably for the new testament in order to write that down couldn't he do it himself can't uh, uh, angels illiterate is god illiterate is this what we're finding out god is actually illiterate probably explain why he's so bloody angry all the time he can't, he can't read a good book. Yeah, you heard it first. God is illiterate. That out to people. Uh -huh. So this is the kind of argument like, oh, yes, my all-powerful God had to use humans. Why? What was he going to use? Elephants? Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe he could just, you know, make, make the, the writing appear in clouds or something and, and you know, Maybe he could just create, a, I mean, he created the universe. He couldn't create a book. I, geez, it's obvious why this guy doesn't debate anymore. Holy crap. All right, I got one more for you. I got one more for you because I, I really, I really want to give Matt Matt Powell a hard time. Look, I, to be honest with you, when I when I said I would do this Matt Powell, um, you know, SmackDown today, um, I, I really, I really was just sort of, well, I'm just gonna, you know, uh, like do it. When, when going through it, I was appalled. Like seriously, I, I, I don't pay attention to these people a lot right i don't i honestly don't it's bad for my mental health it's bad for my my eval you know view of humanity in general i i don't usually pay that much attention but when i sort of go okay well for pride let's let's look at one of the worst anti-pride colossal tools out there matt pal Ugh. um and just going through it he is so much worse than you can possibly imagine Some people think that there is no evidence for God. 
And this is false. There is evidence for God. And we Yeah, and what would that evidence be, Matt Powell? And stun us with your your amazing and dizzying intellect and quite frankly weird haircut. We know that to be the case, and I'm gonna show you why. Because time, space, and matter exists. Time, space, and matter either a pop time, space, and matter. Are you sure you got the right right end of that physics stick there, son? Um, yeah, so there's space-time and, and matter. Like, you don't have time, space, and matter as three different things. Well, um, you know, everything's sort of composed of energy in space-time. Like, I don't... Yeah, I feel like he's going to make a gratuitous physics mistake. A popped into existence uncaused from nothing via a magic act. Everything popped into existence out of nothing via a magic act. So if you didn't know, that's that's Mr. Time, Space and Matters description of the Big Bang. Yeah, yeah. So... His idea of the Big Bang is everything popped into existence by magic out of nothing, which, quite frankly, I could easily use that description to talk about the Christian explanation for everything. Just saying. Because that was literally magic. That was a miracle. It was literally sorcery. I... Or it was created. It... Or it was created. So it either, so here's his dichotomy. And this is this is why Matt Powell is just, you know, it's probably good he's not debating anymore because seriously, it, it, the arguments are terrible. His dichotomy that he's trying to peddle here um, is either it, it, it popped out time, space, and matter. I don't even know what time, space, and matter is supposed to be. I mean, you've got energy, you've got other stuff. Okay, the universe let's just go with the universe because time space and matter is a weird way of putting it um oh thank you Kata. and so good to see you i hope you're well i i i am sending all the love and you know um this is this is for my 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 very good friends and and all of you are my very good friends i i hope you're all well but Kata especially because Kata is a bright bright wonderful person and we're lucky to 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 have them here. Um, anyway, like you know, this 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 whole idea that that is what happened. So your 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 prongs of your dichotomy are time, uh, time, space, and matter, or the universe popped into existence out of nothing by magic, or it was created. Okay, if I can name one other option, that is a false dichotomy. There are other options that do not fit into either category. Okay, so it could have been formed due to natural processes part of a larger cosmos. Or the Big Bang, in fact, is a due to time being a local presentation of space-time, time could extend infinitely. That's another option. So there's two options that don't fall into both of your dichotomous prongs. That's it. Your dichotomy is done. It's not a dichotomy. Either somebody created something out of nothing or nobody created something out of nothing. Yeah, so that, that's the straw man there. It's something out of nothing. Let's go to Lawrence Krauss's really terribly, terribly named book, Something Out of Nothing, where he's talking about sort of a, a quantum state um, that that sort of existed independent of time, um, and that's going to be where it came from. But it's not nothing, nothing, and that's that's where he's been. But you know, we've all heard this before. They still quote, "Oh, you think something came from nothing? Well, what do you mean by nothing? Because if you meant what Lawrence Krauss means, then you're talking about sort of quantum, a quantum state, basically a quantum field." Um, like the easiest way I can explain it, it's not entirely accurate, and I'm not a physicist, but basically when when matter and antimatter go together, they annihilate and they cause the quantum 
sort of field kind of thing. And that's annihilation. So just imagine that in reverse. So you've got um, um, matter and antimatter forming out of a quantum field. And that is really, really, um, it, it's a it's insanely simplistic sort of description kind of thing. It's not, you know, it doesn't, but it, it just shows that nothing isn't the nothing that they're sort of talking about. It doesn't mean sort of a philosophical nothing, like I have nothing in my hand. Well, in physics, you do. I, I have um, air molecules in my hand. I probably have bacteria in my hand. I probably have, you know, subatomic particles in my hand that don't belong. You know, there's tons of things, right? Nothing philosophically is not the same as when we're talking about nothing scientifically, which I believe is sort of just no matter, no energy, essentially. And, and a quantum field is no matter, no energy. So, you know, we're not talking about the same thing, but of course, Matt, people like Matt Power don't care. They, they don't care that we're trying to accurately describe things in science. What, what they care about is for a, a nice little straw man. He probably learned it from Hoven. He stuffs his straw man with straw and says, oh, you believe that a universe magically came from nothing. Yeah, that is so far away from what I believe. It's, it's horrendous. Yeah, out of nothing. Either the universe created itself or somebody. Yeah, so either the universe created itself or somebody else did. Or the universe just formed as a part of natural processes. That that's that's another option. So all of these dichotomies are in fact false dichotomies. He's just presenting them as the only options because, well, he's dishonest as hell. Or somebody created the universe. And saying that the universe could create itself or that time, space, and nature could come into existence on its own with no cause outside. Time, space, and nature. Well, I, I think saying space-time would probably be a good start because that's more accurate of what, what we're talking about here. So three-dimensional space and one of time um, would probably be more accurate um, but, you know, I mean, if you're not interested in being accurate, of course, you're going to go time, space and nature. Um, I mean, by, by nature, what do you mean? Do you mean atoms? Because they didn't form until way after the Big Bang. They had to cool. The universe had to cool before they formed. So what is it that you're actually talking about? Energy, maybe? Is that nature? So um, Matt Powell has a problem with words. He just doesn't, you know, he doesn't understand what words is. Pause outside of it. That is a literal magic act. Atheism is... Oh, a literal magic act. A literal magic act. I... No, a, a literal magic act is a... Is a, um, a, a, a... A... Some sort of powerful god that does some sort of magic... And merely by speaking, it comes into existence. Can you explain how that works? Like, not just that's how it happened, but how that works. Of course not. Atheism is based. Yeah, you're right, Karen. Maybe it's the kitty dictionary again. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe he's been looking too much in the Merriam-Webster children's dictionary for his terms. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. I mean. It's on magic. It is based on mysticism and sorcery. It's a false religion. Yeah, so this is projection again. This is merely projection. It's like, oh, well, because I'm being accused of sorcery, I'm going to claim that I have the science and you guys are doing the magic. N no, no. And we're not saying that you have to necessarily be wrong. It's just we've got no reason to think that you're right. Religion. It's literally the belief that the universe i don't think he knows what literally means because he's saying these things saying literally that's what they believe and that's literally what we don't believe could have created itself from nothing with no cause associated with it with no god okay you're you went... yeah i love like with no god we'll prove there's a god then stop stop sort of saying hey um you know you think this you think that prove what you think because the title of your video is some people cannot believe this happened. Well, in order for me to believe, you'd actually have to present something. Because what you're doing at the moment is just an argument from incredulity. That's all you're doing. You're just saying, hey, I can't believe that these, these atheists think this. And you're not even getting what we think correct. 
So you're sort of doing an argument from incredulity, you're straw manning our position, and you're presenting false dichotomies to say, hey, it's either this thing that I've misrepresented in the first place or my thing. Ugh, Matt Powell, he's terrible. Hey, you're, when you, you have to understand, when you're dealing with an atheist, you are literally dealing with someone who, whether they know it or not, believes in magic. You are literally dealing with someone, whether they know it or not, believes in magic. That is 100% not true. That is that is such an, an a obvious projection of somebody that literally believes in miracles. See, that's a correct use of the word literal because he literally believes in miracles. I don't literally believe in miracles. I don't literally believe in magic. I don't even metaphorically believe in magic. Um, maybe magic as in like, you know, stage magic. Sure. I mean, I literally believe in stage magic. But I don't think that that magic like sorcery is real. Ugh. Believes that poof, out of nothing, everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that's an accurate depiction of the Big Bang. Poof. But, but here's the projection. You think that some mega being with, with magical powers said, let there be light, and suddenly everything was just lit. I mean, it's just, you're trying to just, you know, and, and that's not a straw man. That's what you believe. Everything was produced by nothing. This is why creation science is so powerful. And this is why evolution. You heard it here first. This is why creation science is so powerful. Oh, you mean the acknowledged pseudoscience? The, the, the pseudoscience? Yes, because it's acknowledged as a pseudoscience. It's, um, yeah, no, I, I totally agree, Dr. Octagon. I totally agree. They've been cornered for so long. They just simply take our arguments and project them back on us. You know, we say, hey, this is unrealistic. This is unscientific. This is, thing. oh, no, we've got the science and you don't. Why evolution is so false because of the fundamentals of thermodynamics, the fundamentals of biology. There is nothing about the fundamentals of biology or the fundamentals of thermodynamics that cause evolution not to work. Like, I mean, what are you talking about? This is this is a Hovendism he's learnt from his 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 daddy Hovend. It it wow wow. The fundamentals of science itself. So no, the fundamentals of science do not oppose evolution. The fundamentals of science oppose um magic and mysticism and miracles and all of that kind of thing because the fundam one of the fundamentals of science is empiricism but more and more instead of rising to the challenge of science what theists have been doing lately and and what i've noticed that they've really been doing is well we can't play in the scientific playground so instead, what we'll do is we'll say that we've got the science over here instead and you don't have science anymore. Science is who claims to have science. And nobody apart from these fundamentalists believe that. Science demonstrates the existence of God. How? How? How, do, how does science... Can you show me a paper on demonstrating the existence of God? How, Matt Powell? How is that? And anybody who believes that there is no God or they lack belief in God, they have bought into a lie and they have bought into superstition. So you keep saying, but this is the thing. Your title of your video is some people cannot believe this happened, but you're not giving us any reason to believe you. All you're doing is saying, hey, we've got the science. You don't have the science. The science actually contradicts you. Ugh. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, I, I've had enough about enough of, of that guy. Um yeah, so so this was this was a dive into um a, a really, really genuinely horrible person, like just really um bigoted, really as you saw, bloodthirsty. Um a man who will without batting an eyelid advocate for killing people and killing children and and just sort of you know sort of making the handmaid's tale the the 
future blueprint of society. It's absolutely horrific. And I, I cannot I, I cannot even imagine the dystopian nightmare that this this um is in. I I, I cannot imagine a world where we are killing children for being unruly and we're killing gay people for being gay and we're killing atheists for being atheists and we're killing people for picking up sticks on Sabbath and we're killing people for wearing mixed threads. The, the whole idea that there are there are people following this guy is, is horrific. And um, this is something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to speak out against Matt Powell and all of his vitriol and all of his hate. Um, Matt Powell has nothing to offer anybody. He is, he is simply a, um, evil person with an evil agenda. And, and we got to call out people like this, but uh, what, what makes me the most sad is that, that, you know, knock who I, I respected a great deal is, is in, in, in bed with, with somebody like this. It's what, why would you go, you knock you know what this man is like you know what he's advocating for why would you take your story to him why would you give him the pleasure of of sort of going well see i was right and you were wrong you know there, there's a ton of other christians out there that don't play. like look not, none of this stuff is being supported by mainstream christians and that's what we've got to remember he isn't the normal. He he loves to sit there and go, well, everybody, you know, most people. And it's not most people. He's lying. He's just outright lying. Most people don't support this stuff. People will never support killing children because they're unruly. Because most people were unruly children. That's the thing, Matt Powell. Maybe you were an angel when you were younger, but a lot of people weren't. I mean, I don't understand because, like it says in there, like, oh, only, only the um, he who was without sin throw the first stone. What's he saying? Is the government without sin? They can throw stones. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe he's still on on YouTube. But he should be kicked off, quite frankly. But you know, that's that's not up to me. All I can point out is just sort of um how how terrible he is how terrible a person he is and i usually don't go in for these kind of takedown I, I usually don't like the drama but um this was something i promised myself i would do and i think it's really important um i do not like what this man pro uh, promotes and i i do not like what he's he's spouting And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some I'm gonna throw some some pride stuff in, and I hope you join me. I hope um, you know, and and we've got to remind ourselves that there are still people standing um, beside this, and and standing beside our 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 um our friends and our family and our, our loved ones and the people doing nothing wrong but trying to express ourselves and i want to give a big shout out to to chris taylor who i 100 percent support and and planner walk who i 100 percent support and and everybody who i 100 percent support why why does why does like their happiness mean nothing to these people it's just yeah you know, I, I don't know, but but Matt Powell doesn't seem like a very happy person to me, he, and he doesn't seem like a very like astute thinker either. He just seems like a, a guy who's, you know, going through life with, with his book telling him every step to take, every move to make, and someone's always watching him. I I can't imagine what kind of a life you have if if you think that everybody's watching you all, all the time, and you know, not not you you can't do anything wrong no no nobody's watching you like you can you can you might you'll make mistakes i make mistakes i um 
I, I really want to just say, like, you make amends for them. You, you move on. You, you, don't don't internalize things that you do wrong. Just because you do something wrong, it doesn't make you a bad person. Um, I, I think that this internalization and the shame. And I want to I want to sort of comment on somebody's videos in a bit how they sort of make you ashamed of who you are and then try to sell you the cure. You know, you should be ashamed for all of the sin you do. You're you're broken. You're evil. You're you're you know X Y and Z. Oh, but if you just come and join our church and get forgiveness and give your money. I don't know, maybe I'm cynical. But thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I, I just want to send so much love out there to you and, and all of our, all of the wonderful people who uh, make my life better, um, like like Bree and like Caterpillar and, and all of the people out there. Um, and Amy and 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 just just all of our our trans and gay friends who happy pride, um, and and I hope I hope you are getting the support that uh, we all we all need in life to be our ourselves. Um, but but do be kind to yourself and do be kind to each other. Uh, I want to wish you lots of love. Um, do give a like and subscribe if you do feel so inclined. It really helps me out, and I, I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone for being here. Um, I, I didn't sort of expect such a big response to it, but obviously Matt Powell's one that brings out a lot of people as the depth of his disgustingness is just incredible. So, um, But I hope I've given you things to say to these people if they do sort of arc up, sort of, if people are like, well, you know, all well, the children will be harmed. Well, what about the children being harmed by guns? Why aren't you going out and protesting that? Why, why are you picking on the trans people? Oh, gay people get get sick and they get AIDS? Well, what about the amount of sugar in food? Why aren't you protesting that? That that does a lot more harm than than just, you know, what, what why? So, yeah, do keep that in mind. You know, if, if you're going to protest lifestyle choices, you probably should be out the front of a Dunkin' Donuts or, or, or a Krispy Kreme or something. Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, lots of love. Be kind. Take care. And I will see you in the next one.